So in your uh, screen, uh, in your screen, there is a comparison, uh, comparative between the, uh, we specifically we talk about assembly eh, and imposition, eh, uh, manual assembly eh, compared to the computer to film and computer to play. Okay, so this is taken from this book. Okay, handbook, uh, uh, handbook of print media. Eh. So uh, manual assembly, the manual assembly of a sheet from page section and page element as well as combination and positioning of several pages on a print sheet. Uh, that's the meaning of assembly. Uh, assembly is the uh, combining, uh, combining and positioning of several pages on a print sheet. Now, several pages, uh, uh, several pages, Okay, several pages. Uh, so, maksudnya, not one pages, but many pages. So, many pages here may refer to, uh, refer to, uh, refer to multiple page, multiple page printed product. For example, a magazine, a catalog, or whatever it is yang multiple page. Eh? Uh, when we talk about multiple page, there must be a sequence, a sequence of job, or a sequence, sequence of numbers, eh? sequence, mengikut turutan, turutan. Eh? Page 1, page 2, jumpa page 3, kemudian page 4 dan se seterusnya. Eh? So that is the uh, meaning of uh, multiple page. Now from this slide, Okay, it says that uh, a time-consuming sheet assembly and imposition is basically a time-consuming, cost-intensive, and sometimes uncertain stage okay, within the production chain. Production chain ni maksudnya apa kelas? Maksudnya, when we talk about the workflow from pre-press, okay, uh, specifically in pre-press, from the concept of the design itself, from the idea development concept whatsoever eh, and we put everything into a layout eh, dan sebagainya eh, until the plate making eh, the, the stage itself eh, is very time consuming and cost intensive eh, especially especially for multiple page printed product multiple page eh, macam tadi saya sebutkan buku catalog eh, dan sebagainya so in our situation, in your project, for example, eh, uh, is a packaging, right? Is a packaging, some sort, is a packaging. Eh? So packaging to basically is a single page, eh? is a single page. Kan? Uh, so the, the, the level of complexity is different from a multiple page. And if you notice a few of your friends, eh, uh, berapa kawan anda yang buat uh, more than one page, uh, for example. Kenapa saya panggil dia page? Because there is a front side and then there is a back side. There is a sequence of page, kan? Ada sequence, eh? Uh, so, dia punya tahap kompleksiti dia tu berbeza. Eh? When we talk about the sheet assembly and impo, impositioning. Uh, eh? Very time consuming because when we talk about multiple page, individual page need to to be assembled, uh, assembled, disusun atur, eh, dengan tepatnya. Number one, number two is very cost intensive. When we compare this between this manual assembly and uh, compared to uh, to workflow, computer to film and computer to to play, so there is an extra steps. Eh? need to be taken eh, in order to to produce the plate making process okay now of course when we talk about this step extra step eh, will involve extra material eh, to do all this the material machine and also the man manpower 
So uh, next, uh, uncertain stage. Uncertain means that during this stage, for example, eh, there, there may be, uh, mungkin, kemungkinan besar, eh, there will be a risiko of error. Uh, adanya risiko what? error, eh, kesilapan dan sebagainya because it is done manually. Eh, it is done ma manually. Now, when we compare this to computer to film and computer to plate, eh, eh, computer to film and computer to plate, so what happened here, it eliminates, uh, cut short lah basically, these uh, three steps. Eh, uh, but it is integrated, the pre-flight into one single step. Okay, so uh, now, you can see here. So today we're going to discuss about this sheet assembly and impo, impositioning eh, in this uh, session. Now, Now, uh, in this digital age, eh, class, eh, uh, in this digital age, the manual assembly process is, I would say, um, uh, it's not relevant anymore because uh, due to the uh, disadvantage that I mentioned and the use of digital prepress workflows. Eh, semakin banyak digunakan, eh, semakin meluas penggunaan dia, adoption dia semakin luas digunakan dalam indust industri ini. Eh. Dah tak adalah jenis space up, eh, you know, tanpa manual, is a manual assembly, put everything in place, and then you pre-fly and everything, so it's quite uh, tedious, uh, what you call uh, activities. Eh. So in this uh, digital age, everything is done digitally. Uh, digitally. So here, 3.2.5.3 with manual working method sheet assembly of a standard products and complex assembly of multicolored products often cause bottlenecks during pre-production. Bottlenecks mean, like I mentioned, uh, when we can, if we can imagine eh, bottle, eh, bottle tu, bagian depan botol tu dia bagian atas botol tu dia dia ada macam tempat kita muncung dia kan muncung di bagian depan tu so bagian bawah tu dia besar is a botol so bagian bawah ni makin mengecil jadi air yang keluar tu daripada botol tu akan lebih sedikit kan jadi it cause uh, not efficient lah to the flow of the uh, water from the botol uh, tapi itu dalam konteks botol kita tak boleh keluar banyak kan air tu kan Eh, kita kena steady eh, so that air tu keluar dengan baiknya. So in in the print production, we don't want that. We want something which is seamless and efficient process. Ha, dia tak boleh jadi bottlenecks. Eh, dia tak boleh jadi bottleneck. Dia kena streamline process. Okay. Uh, that is during the manual working method. Okay. So, uh, even if a great deal of time is spent on achieving a precise register and correct arrangement of the pages, sheets and the sheet elements, it is difficult to avoid usual imposition errors. Like I mentioned, everything is done manually, so there will be an error, there will be a risk of error on a register. Number one, and a correct arrangement. Uh, kalau complex, Pages, uh, complex pages kan, ada multiple page dan sebagainya, banyak pula tu, it's a four color job, eh? so it need to be correctly arranged on the pages. Eh? So, uh, number one, eh? number two, it, it need, need to be positioned uh, accurately, so to remove the misregistration problems. Eh? So preparation jobs such as sorting, cutting, individual, uh, cutting the individual films also takes time and are potential uh, sources of errors. Eh? Potential source of error. Dia menjadi uh, risiko kepada permasalahan tersebut. Eh? For example, eh? 
So some of the books uh, refer this as a pass up process, pass up test tanpa. Eh? Awak dah tak ada pengalaman benda ni. I don't uh, I don't think that uh, Puan Hanis ada pengalaman benda ni. Eh? Tapi I have experience in this. Maknanya, if we have a film, okay, this is a film. Eh? You can see you have a text, you have a logo over here. What the logo? And you are you have different element. For example, this text. So you need to cut everything in in single piece and then paste up, tampal satu persatu. Huh? That is meant by assembly. So uh, we are moving, not moving. Eh? Ha, kita dalam digital world, eh? Specif specifically in printing. Eh? So everything is done digitally. Eh? Everything is done digitally on the screen. Uh, by contrast, dig digital sheet assembly eh, on the screen eh, offers higher register precision because everything is composite. Why? One of the reason of this is that everything is composite. Bukan macam ni. Satu persatu. It's a CMYK film, CMYK. Satu persatu lah, CMYK film. So everything is composite, satu. Uh, so it will improve the register. Uh, this can avoid mis -regis mistake eh, by program supported assembly. Uh, of course, eh, with the assembly of the with the program eh, yang support tu. So digital imposition uh, raises the quality of the print production uh, level. Quality of print production makin jadi bertambah baik eh. uh, with this digital techno. Logis, yeah. it reduce the cost of materials, yeah, space and machine. Yeah. If I can remember, if I can recall yeah, during my time at Viva Printing, yeah, we still have this film. Yeah. So maknanya, yeah, to have, to, to assemble, yeah, to assemble all these elements, yeah, you need a light table, you need a light table and you need a person yeah, that dedicate, dedicate dedicated, eh? yang very specific, yang very dedicated, dia punya mata, dia punya kemahiran dia to assemble each of the individual element in its place. Uh, eh? uh, so that's the mean of space. And you need a light table, a large light table, so basically uh, complement the uh, process. Eh? And of course the material, eh? the suitable material to do the manual assembly. Assembly. Now, uh, the imposition programs available on the market make it possible to combine traditional manual sheet imposition with the user friendliness of publishing software and to replace manual procedure with digital command chain. So, so what it means here today is that with the programs, eh, with the imposition program, it re replace the traditional manual sheet impo position with the use of user friendly soft software uh, eh? user friendly software which is can be integrated in the publishing software now the first priority of program is to simplify the safeguard repeated tasks eh? libraries of the imposition layout that comes with the programs can be used for a standard jobs now here, so maknanya di sini, with this program, eh, with the imposition program, it reduce or it remove the manual, manual traditional assembly pro process. Uh, eh? So if you can, uh, uh, you don't have this experience, eh, but few of you eh, have this experience. For example, uh, the student that have done their plates, eh, few of them. Eh, Hafi and all, berapa orang tu, when they do this, uh, send their file uh, to the outsource, they will use the word such as masking, eh? uh -huh. assembly eh, dan sebagainya. So maknanya, eh, uh, those masking process dah jadi digital. Eh? Masking mean you paste everything lah, into place lah. Eh? Uh, so, uh, they still use that word. Eh? Tapi, the activities is becoming uh, more di digital. Eh? 
So the 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 aims of this uh, program is to make uh, to simplify uh, the process, uh, to simplify the process. Uh, so uh, here, what it means by um, libraries of imposition layouts. Uh, so as as you know, as uh, anda sendiri maklum, uh, like imposition layout will be according to the press type, uh, type of folding eh, dan sebagainya. Kalau buku, right angle fold, 4 up, 8 up, 16 up dan sebagainya kan. There is a types of folding. Awak pun dah buat print text magazine, you are exposed to types of folding. Eh? So, you know. Eh? Uh, so, it is uh, quite difficult. Eh? Sangat difficult. Eh? Uh, sangat complex. The complexity is different eh? uh, from a single page. Eh? So, there is a lot of configuration. I would say configuration. Eh? So, dalam buku ni dia kata libraries. Because why? Because uh, uh, 8 up uh, uh, pagination requires different folding techniques. Uh, eh? So, uh, medium size press, medium imposition eh? dan sebagainya. So, uh, so those imposition scheme, eh, kita panggil dia imposition scheme, eh, can be safe. Eh. Oleh kerana di, dia digital, those imposition scheme boleh disimpan, boleh di save, kemudian ditarik keluar imposition tu dalam software lah. Tarik keluar and then kita boleh apply for our jobs. Okay, uh, those is called imposition scheme. Eh. So, here imposition, the layouts. Eh. Almost all program takes into account the finishing work. Uh, like I mentioned, eh, tadi saya sebut folding kan. Uh, so, when, when we talk about the imposition, eh, particularly, eh, specifically, eh, for multiple page, eh, mesti memikirkan kaedah finishing. Eh. Uh, eh, not to mention your packaging. Uh, I remember eh, last last week, uh, Joe, eh, Izuan, eh, Izuan tanya saya, can I impose, can I arrange my packaging or my uh, packaging into this kind of layout, kan? Dia tanya, kan? Uh, of course, we need to think about the finishing. Itu yang saya, saya recommend to, siapa nama? Izuan. Izuan, can you check this? What is the cost to do this type of finishing? Huh, eh? in, in, in this size, for example. Then, eh? Uh, work to be carried out on the product. So this program automatically adapt the lip and the binder creep eh, occurring with the saddle stitching. So uh, furthermore, eh, in, in this literature or in this book, it's saying that uh, they, they consider uh, when you do those imposition, uh, it's con considered the creeping eh, for saddle stitching and many, many more. This is some example for saddle stitching. When we do saddle stitching, there is a problem of creep, creeping. Uh, ada satu masalah nama dia, creeping. Eh? I know you have uh, discussed this in your, in your, uh, during your print tech magazine, kan? Eh? Uh, dalam print tech magazine, mesti ada cerita ni. Sebab apa? When you do the inserting, eh? is a multiple page printed product, then you use the saddle stitching. Eh? When you insert those, yang terkeluar tu, kita consider dia, kita namakan dia sebagai masalah creeping. Uh, so, you kena compensate during the impo, imposition. Eh, kalau dah lupa, boleh tanya balik cikgu dia. Eh? Okay, so uh, so similarly, in our uh, uh, workflows, eh, to produce your produce your what? Produce your packaging kan? Uh, packaging, we need to consider the finishing. Eh? Dan cut. Kan? Uh, is it a platen or is it a rotary cutting, die cutting process? Uh, itu yang saya beritahu kepada seorang pelajar. So, how how can you do the imposition, kan? Uh, kan? Can I do something like this? So, I want you to reconsider that. Eh? Reconsider. And I hope you have the answer lah during your presentation until you, you can support your what you call your presentation with the proper evidence.
Ah, okay. So this is some of uh, this is one example of the imposition sheet. Eh? Uh, this is is example of the imposition sheet. Now, as you can see, imposition sheet for eight pages. Uh, the example yang saya bagi lah for eight page, pages with information on page orientation, eh, printing and the finishing. Yang ini untuk lapan pages. Eh, I believe you done this in your print tech magazine. Ada buat print tech magazine? Benda-benda macam ni? Ada kan? Kalau tak ada satu kerugian lah. Eh, eh. Uh, so kalau tak boleh output plate pun kita kena buat lah eh, so that you understand eh, which one is image area, which part is the folding mark, eh, uh, which part is the folding uh, area. Eh. Uh, this for example needs a page number, the pagination eh, and the cutting mark. Huh. So which, which part is the gripper margin? Uh, must be taken into account with the bleed of print areas eh, addition to the total page size. Okay, so yang ni, yang ni is quite complicated because this is a multiple page. Eh, multiple page. Again, ni lagi give you an example 8 page. Eh. So kalau anda punya is a packaging, is a single page. Uh, like, like, mesti boleh buat eh. Mesti boleh buat kan. Eh. So, senang eh. So we're going to discard this. Okay, so imposition means the correct assembly of pages for a layout. Correct assembly of pages for a layout. Assembly of pages for a layout. For example, for 8, 16, 32 pages. But how do you assemble all those pages into a Single imposition sheet. Macam mana awak assemble everything into one sheet like this? Eh? So you need to to arrange this properly. You have the the calculation. Awak ada calculation. We have done the calculation. You understood the uh, finishing process. So now you're going to do the imposition sheet. Eh? Uh, so it's not too complicated because it is just a single page is a packaging is a single page kan yeah, is a single page yeah. uh, compared to a magazine eh. awak benda yang susah pun awak pernah buat iaitu print tech magazine eh. awak dah buat benda macam ni takkanlah uh, packaging yang very simple straightforward that you cannot do you can you can do this eh. now the two basic working materials are required to manufacture the printing plate Number one, the imposition sheet and the imposition layout. So this is the imposition sheet. Okay. So which depends on the type of folding to follow. Uh, depends on the type of folding to follow. So in our case, we don't have any folding. Right? Uh, we have lah. Uh, tapi we do the tracing kan. Uh, we do the tracing. So for multiple page, we need to consider the types of folding. Yeah, you need to consider the type of folding. Yeah. So as you know, eh, dan juga awak dah belajar eh, about post press, there is a multiple or various type of folding techniques. Yeah. Uh, so all those folding, folding techniques tu, dia bukan creativity semata-mata. It must take into account about the technicalities of the machine. Ha. Huh. Uh, mesin. Mesin nak melipat ni tu. Ha, sebelum tahu nak mesin lipat capabilities dia, kena tahu jenis folding dia. Okay, you need to understand those first. Okay, so here, how how can I relate this to your project is that uh, I think on the, for those who made the, who made the uh, multiple page for the major two, I uh, need to consider this as aspect. Okay. Okay, now the imposition sheet. Uh, this is the imposition sheet. Shows the position of the section to be printed. So this is called section. Yeah, this is called section to be printed. The distance between the pages from the middle of the sheet and uh, from the binding edge uh, and from the edges of the sheet also takes into account 
information such as position of the gripper edge and shows where the different marking should be made that are needed for printing and subsequent sheet finishing. So all these markers need to be available here. Uh, eh? uh, need to be available here. In this, uh, in this example, eh, dalam contoh ni, uh, this is like, eh? zoom in. Eh, dalam contoh ni kan. Eh? Eh, this is a, of course this is a large format press. Eh? Uh, large format press kan. Sebab apa? Why? Because it can fit 8 up. 8 up. 8 pages. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 up. So it is a large format press. So need to consider all those markings, eh? elements dan so sebagainya. So in your case, what are the mark marking elements that required? We have discussed this with Encik Jamil. What is it? Uh, register mark. Uh, register mark. Right? What else? You need to also consider the gripper margin. Okay. You don't need, anda tak perlukan this signature used in the same, you don't need this collecting mark because you're not a multiple page. Okay. Anda bukan a multiple page. Okay. Eh? So what what you need uh, is that all those marks yang disebutkan tadi and in addition to this you also need to consider the the what the print control strips or the color bar need to be position over here Okay, uh, also you need also to, uh, the, the imposition sheet uh, must sometimes also contain information of the position of a numbering unit of perforation. So in addition to this, eh, some of the uh, imposition sheet, eh, they are the information about this uh, job or plates. Eh, why those need to be applied in this, uh, because to differentiate between one job and the other. Nak membezakan antara satu job dengan satu job yang lain. Dia ada dia ada uh, identification uh, apa dia job number. Basically according to the job doc docket. Uh, according to the job docket. Okay so job names eh, uh, dan juga uh, in, in the Indicator. In indicator means cyan plate, black, uh, cyan plate, magenta plate. Eh? So cyan, magenta, yellow and black. All those things need to be applied in your imposition shape. Okay, so all these things eh, such as signature collecting marks. Eh? Collecting marks are indispensable for processing book blocks. Ha, nampak? Eh? Untuk jadi, untuk buat buku eh, nak kena ada holding mark, uh, sorry, collecting marks. Eh? Because uh, kalau buku tu, so I take uh, your magazine for example. How many pages your magazine class? Anybody can help me? How many pages of your print tech magazine? 40 pages. Huh? 40 pages, including or excluding cover? Termasuk ataupun tidak termasuk cover? Uh, tak termasuk ke sini? Tak termasuk. So 40 pages. So you divide by 8. So you need 5. 5 section. So how can you know? Ha, macam mana awak nak tahu setiap section itu berada pada kedudukan dia? So you need to apply a collecting marks. Eh? Collecting mark. Eh? So that you nampak susunan itu dia akan menurun ke ke bawah. I know you can imagine, you cannot imagine this uh, because awak punya pendedahan sangat kurang berkenaan dengan perkara tersebut. Eh. So, I will contribute. Eh. Saya akan contribute untuk memahamikan perkara ini seperti dalam figure 3.2 eh. 3.2 ni collecting mark ni. So, uh, numbering unit uh, <coughs> ni collecting 
mark. Okay, so from here, eh, during your finishing, eh, so when this, uh, it, it, this is collect means, eh, ataupun gather, gathering, kan? Bila dia gather, so ini nampak macam tangga. Something wrong with this susunan, kan? Positioning, dia akan jadi macam ni. So, immediately, uh, immediately, operator akan nampak, dia akan baca kat tepi ni. Dia tak ada baca, oh, yang ni page 2, cantum dia page 3, kan? Dia tak ada masa nak buat macam tu. So, dia akan tengok benda yang macam ni. Ha. See? So, macam ni, kan? So, something wrong lah. Sepatutnya ni, dia, dia macam tangga menurun. So, yang ni macam dia dah lari. So, something like a mix up sheet. Dia dah bercampur. Ha. Kita jangan fikir yang kita cetak satu, eh. Uh, this is a manufacturing process. Kita bukan buat satu. Uh, printing is a reproduction process kan. Dia, dia, dia mass produce kan. Dia produce kan. Dia banyak kan. Uh, kita kena set mindset kita fikir yang macam tu kan. Uh, kalau macam ni, consider there is a problem. Kalau macam ni, is a double sheet yang double berlaku. Maksudnya, section nombor dua dengan nombor tiga ni, maksudnya section tiga ni uh, lain kan. Tapi dia dah ada dua kali dalam ni. Uh, yang macam ni dia dah missing, for example. Uh, sepatutnya dia jadi macam ni. So, this is some example of a collecting marks. Huh? Uh, so, uh, this is for for perfect bind, perfect binding. Uh, remember, before dia sapu glue kat this area for perfect binding and paste the cover, eh, the operator still have time kan? Uh, dia lepas buat collecting, eh, dia akan lalu sampai sini dan dia akan tengok okay, everything okay, so baru dia buat by binding eh, so in this part eh, this is for perfect binding, kalau dia jadi uh, saddle stitching, of course dia takkan letak dekat spine, dia akan letak dekat bahagian luar sini, uh, so you akan nampak di bahagian luar sini kalau letak dekat spine <laughs> tak betul lah, nanti akan nampak lah collecting mark tu, kan satu, yang kat luar ni nampak. Yang kat dalam tu tak nampak langsung sebab dia in, in setting. Alright. So, if you, uh, kalau awak faham eh, apa yang saya sebut kan. Kalau awak tak mengerti je kan, uh, apa yang dimasukkan sebagai collecting, gathering dan sebagainya. I think you need to go back to your uh, buku lah eh. Uh, because I don't have time to to cover the found, found foundation. Okay. So that's the thing about this collecting. Yeah? Give you some example here. Now, uh, let's go back here. Okay, so all these things lah, eh, numbering and the number of plates eh, dan sebagainya. So, need to be uh, put it over, over here. So, the thing that I mentioned here, numbering, number of plates, eh, all those information eh, can be refer, uh, give you one example. So this is a, a gang job, this is a plate, this is a gang job eh, kita nampak this is a gang job because why? Because we can see the anatomy ataupun the layout of the packaging over here and somehow we can see a, a different type of product. This is a bookmark and a calendar kan, so maknanya apa relate dia dengan packaging. So this is a gang, gang job. Kan? Ha, tapi that is not the point, ha, itu aspek konsep design dan sebagainya but my point here is this, saya nak membuktikan bahawa kepada anda all the job information is stated over here this for example, this is a docket numbers kan? 33695 UI underscore UITM, nombor metric, bla 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 lah nama dia, eh? uh, single sided nampak ada indicator menyatakan this is a single sided print Eh, single, sided, this is a black plate. 
Okay. So this is a black. Okay. So of course there is a number as there is information about the uh, what you call uh, uh, date, eh? the day, date and date, uh, date eh? about when this plate being out, output. What else? Also, they have this uh, control strip eh? for quality control. I think you have covered this with your lecturers in process control. Eh? What the cover? Tak faham nanti kau tanya dia balik ataupun tengok balik di video dia. What else? Also, uh, process control element such as color bar also, also position on this side. Okay, so what other indicator, uh, what other indicator? There is a A and there is a B side. So this is, this is a quite complicated job eh, complicated job because this two part, there is a two part, ada dua part eh, on this packaging, one part and this is another part. So this two part can need to be assembled to make up a complete eh, packaging. Ha. Eh, maksudnya, ada dua bahagian packaging dia. Eh, cantuman A dan B ni menghasilkan satu packaging yang lengkap. Okay? Ha, nampak complic complicated the job is. Eh. Kalau awak rasa awak buat, awak punya kerja tu dah habis complicated, ha, si, ni pelajar saya eh, 2009 dah hasilkan projek MJ ni eh. So what else? Uh, they also uh, basic mark, uh, basic marking for trimming. Eh? So so in this job, eh, as you can see, there is a center line. The center line there is to differentiate between these two parts. Now remember from this slide yang saya bacakan tadi, dia bila dia buat imposition ni, dia consider the finishing aspect. Uh, dia bukan sesuka hati, dia consider finishing aspect. So in this situation, eh, eh, the, the the designer or this this student, they, they don't fikir, eh, because I have two set, two part, A and B, so I don't want this two part to be mixed up. Mak, tak nak dia bercampur. Aha, so macam dia, dia buat dia label kan lah. This part is A, this part is B. Nanti waktu print dia akan nampak, this part A, part B. So this printed sheet, just imagine the printed sheet will be cut so they will nampak. This is part A and this is part B. So it is important for you to understand this basic con concept. Eh, you need to consider all this aspect. Kalau awak dekat luar nanti kan, kalau awak kerja di industri kan, awak mesti terfikir eh, macam mana. This is the complexity of this job kan. Saya tak nak dia mix up and everything. You can label this in this impo, imposition. Okay. Okay, so this is an overall layout of a 16 page eh, brochure. Ini kalau 16 page brochure ni overall layout lah. There is a front side, there is a back side. Uh, anda ada tak benda ni? Uh, depending on the complexity of your job. Eh, bergantung kepada tahap kesukaran job anda. Kalau single, tak ada. Uh, kalau there is a front and back, kena ada. So I can see this in your minor bro project. Eh, or major two, siapa yang buat booklet, eh, buku dan sebagainya, you need to show this part. Eh, as the evidence that you do the impo, impo, imposition. Okay, so while the imposition sheet establish the position of the pages on the printed sheet, the imposition layout shows how the total number of Pages of a printed product should be divided up. Ah, kalau lah imposition sheet dia menunjukkan position page, imposition layout ni dia menunjukkan total page, total number of pages uh, of a printed product macam ni. Ini layout kan? Ini overall layout dia. Front side and then this is a back, 
back side. Uh, print both side. Okay, so this is the layout means. Yeah? This also indicates how often and which way individual sheet have to be folded. Dia menunjukkan, eh, menunjukkan bagaimana sheet itu dilipat. Eh, uh, complicated eh, this, this part macam buku eh, tapi complicated. So, I think uh, this is, uh, this because this is a book, booklet eh. So the imposition layout shows how a printed sheet in a format 70 times 100 centimeter. This is an example. Uh, this is the example. It's folded into a required final format. In this respect, the imposition layout adds the imposition sheets and is the result of optimization of the number of factors. Now, the keyword here, optimize. How do we do this? Macam mana kita nak optimisekan sheet ni? Of course, the the result is this. Tapi the planning stage ialah sheet manage uh, ataupun uh, material ataupun substrate management tu yang kita buat calculation tu. Satu. Yang kedua, if a multiple page, how do you know that you optimise the paper? How do you know this? With the yeah, dummy. Then you can show the types of folding. Huh. About that, eh? uh, so for those who do booklet, catalog or multiple page lah. Eh? Uh, dia mesti ada dummy ya. Lah. Uh, kalau tak ada dummy, dia, dia letak aja kan. Maknanya, maknanya dia tak faham lah. Huh. Eh? Dia tak faham. So during your uh, presentation nanti, kena tunjukkan dummy for multiple page. Uh, kalau single page macam booklet, tunjukkan apa? Tunjukkan mockup yang awak buat lah. Tunjukkan mockup eh, yang anda buat tu. Kan? Eh? And of course dia punya jalan kira yang duk kita duk buat beberapa minggu yang le lepas. Macam mana you boleh dapat the result of single up, two up, three up dan se sebagainya. So, uh, this optimization by a numbers of factor, ada faktor-faktor yang diambil kira eh, untuk optimisekan printed sheet. Number of pages, eh, format of the printed sheet, apa, apa format dia, the composition, paper composition and the grain. We also mentioned this in few year, few year, uh, weeks back. And the format of the printing press, eh, small, medium or large format. Uh, the finishing machine, eh, the cutting and folding machine, and the final format, uh, the final size of the product, and the type of bind, binding, uh, perfect bind, thread, or wire stitching. This is some of the uh, factors that you consider during your impo imposition. Okay, so uh, the way to do this by a mock-up and di jalan kira pengiraan tersebut. Okay, so if you done your jalan kira properly, eh, Puan Anis boleh tolong saya nanti, uh, double check semua dalam tab dulu, uh, you, you, you can do this. Eh? Uh, so that is for your major project. Uh, so for major tu, you need to do that. Can you buat juga lah. Eh? Major tu, for your major, major tu. Uh, for those who do multiple page, uh, you also need to do the dummy. Okay, to do the dummy. Because we, the only way to do this, to, 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 to show that you optimize number of paper and number of factors ni, optimization ni, dengan ada dummy. Kalau tak ada dummy, macam mana nak membuktikan bahawa awak plan you punya project properly? Hmm. Kan? Kan? That's the rational or logic behind that. Okay, now uh, next we talk about the uh, imposition program. Eh? Imposition for program. Uh, types of imposition programs eh, can be divided into two. Number one is device independent. Okay, device independent means, maksudnya apa? Device independent. Device independent ni maksudnya dia bebas, dia tak terikat dengan mana-mana device. Uh, they stand alone. Uh, 
some of the name is imposition. You can find this. Ada ada syarikat yang dah bankrupt, eh? ada syarikat yang dah tutup. Ada juga syarikat yang dah bergabung dengan sebuah syarikat yang lebih besar. Eh? Contohnya macam Preps. Okay. Preps dah bergabung dan telah dibeli oleh Corp. 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 Dah dibeli oleh Kodak. Kodak Preps Imposition Software. Dia dah integrate dalam Kodak work, Workflow. I have experience lah. Bukanlah kata saya hebat. Saya share lah. Saya pun ilmu tak cukup. Ha, tu yang saya duduk mencari. Kalau ilmu tu cukup tak ada evidence macam ni. Eh. Eh, ha, saya pun pengalaman saya dengan Preps ni. Oh yo. Haa. <laughs> eh. Uh, memang technical, memang everything is about numbers. Eh? You must have your calculator beside you and you do the calculation. One single mistake, uh, dia tak dapat measurement dengan betul. Eh? Jadi position dia salah. Uh, maybe that is uh, that is way back in the uh, in the late 2000 lah. Right? 2005, 2006 dia punya software tak tak begitu ni eh. Uh, tapi now I think dia dah more user friendly. They more into drag and drop. Drag and drop maksudnya, you boleh drag, you boleh drop and you just hit in the numbers, everything is user friendly. Right. So, Kodak Preps Imposition of Software. Right. So, you can go to the installation and do the installation lah. Right. Tapi, we don't have the software lah. Kita cuma tengok dia lah. Apa nak buat? Right. Maybe you can, re you, you, you can, uh, you know, apa pun cakap? Uh, you can suggest to the department to buy this soft software. Okay, so uh, next is uh, uh, press wise eh, dan sebagainya lah. This is all those old uh, software lah yang buat ni. Eh. Dulu ada satu, saya dah lupa nama dia. Dulu ada saya pernah buat, eh. pernah uji kaji. Uh, uji kaji. Masa mula-mula saya jadi pencarah, nak mengajar benda ni because we don't have the software. Uh, saya download lah tapi dah expired dah. Benda. Saya lupa. I don't recall the program eh. One of these program lah eh, yang boleh buat info imposition. Number one. Okay, device independent. So, uh, device independent ni tak terikat dengan mana-mana uh, workflows ataupun uh, device. Uh, dia tak terikat. Dia is a software stand alone. So, meaning to say, dalam senario printing ni, dia boleh jadi uh, you do the imposition, kita siapkan all those imposition, then we outsource the plate making. Ha, nampak? Sebab tu adanya device independent. Ha, kalau tak ada device independent software ni, maknanya tak adalah wujud senario ataupun uh, flow yang macam tu eh, dalam industri kita. Eh? Sebab adalah benda tu di, uh, diwujudkan. Number one. Okay, number two. Uh, the second scenario eh, dalam satu satu industri yang lebih besar lagi eh, uh, a program imposition program that those are offered by the companies syarikat-syarikat uh, besar yang mengeluarkan mengeluarkan software ini eh, mengeluarkan software ini for example Agfa Barco Barco pun dah tak ada eh Heidelberg Heidelberg ni sampai sekarang masih ada lagi eh, Cross eh, Scan Graphic and Screen ah uh, ni some of the Companies that offer imposition program type type uh, link with their with their the device uh, offering them macam macam tu eh? uh, so need to remember that so let's say in you have the opportunity kan mana tahun depan ni kerja di sebuah syarikat eh? the imposition program they use uh, brand name is Heidelberg uh, so anda dah familiar with that. Eh, uh, eh anda dah familiar. Okay, so ah, for your project, uh, we discuss that uh, we plan eh, to output eh, your what you call your plates, eh, plate making process using screen. Eh? So this is the imposition software for your for your project eh, that is applied at pusat percetakan and eh, screen impose 2000 client okay saya ulang jenis screen impose 
2,000 clients. So you don't have the opportunity to do this. We also don't have those opportunity. Kan? Kita, kita juga tak ada opportunity nak buat benda ni secara hands on due to the pandemic, eh? due to the arahan semasa. So uh, what I want you to do is to put this in your report. Eh? Screen impose 2000 client. This is the software that use to, to do the imposition for your pro project one major one. Next, let's talk about the workflows. Eh? Let's talk about the workflows. So, imposition layout and sheet assembly in the pre energy workflow. This is one example of the pre energy workflows eh? by Heidelberg. I need the old one. Eh? Sekarang bukan pre energy lah. Nama dia pre net. Pre energy more into code. I don't, I don't know what happened lah. Maybe they, they jual ke apa ke. Eh? Uh, the most manufacturers of the image setter. Computer to film system eh, or to computer to plate system have made it their job not to offer the output unit and isolated system, but rather to configure the image setter, whether as film or plate setter, as a complete system. Ha. We can say that most manufacturers yang tadi saya sebutkan, Screen, Heidelberg, Kodak dan sebagainya, dia mereka ni menawarkan the complete system. A complete system, bukan software saja. A complete system, meaning that uh, from the workflows, eh, uh, in the workflow itself, from the uh, uh, imposition up to the ripping stage, up to the plate making, that is tied together with their plate setter eh, as a complete system. Uh, this give you one example. Eh. So great job, maybe from a customer, a client, or designer, eh, they create their job, jobs and send to the files. Eh. Next, they do the refining, eh. all those input data and sebagainya, they refine or, or everything is ready, just can go through the imposition layout and compile the pages. Eh. So, if the file need to be refined, then it need to be, no, now the word refine here, refer to the file that is that is in that is in the native file. Ah, uh, belum jadi PDF lah dengan kata lain. Ah, eh? uh, dia jadi still in the working working file. Working file is a uh, InDesign file, uh, Illustrator AI file. Ah, eh? uh, jangan terkejut eh kalau customer bagi awak tu dia orang tak tahu PDF. Nak tahu PDF bilang kita. Ah, eh? uh, that is better lah I think in in terms of production workflows because oleh kerana PDF ni semua orang boleh buat ha, tapi dia tak tahu apa requirement PDF untuk printing. Ha, dia tak tahu apa requirement PDF untuk printing industri dia tak tahu eh. So if you have learned eh, kalau awak dah belajar, kita ada belajar standard, PDF standard, PDF specs eh, dan sebagainya. Uh, so it's better eh, in the industry, eh, uh, the client give you the working file in terms of the input data and will go through a system called refining and this is under the pre energy workflows to refine and produce the pdf and then uh, compile the pages and send to the output and whether to be approved or straight away to the plate making ataupun out output one way Second way is that they create the PDF, okay, and send to the imposition, compile the pages into its imposition layout and send to the out, output, output whether to be a proof or to be a plate. Okay, this is some of the example. So maybe your, your project, maybe you can draw a diagram. You can only look at diagram. So, uh, apa? you can start with create a job, what next? You uh, uh, PDF, export to PDF, what else? Uh, dia jadi export PDF kan? And then you do the imposition, yeah? compiling all those pages, and then you send to the 
output. Uh, you can do that. Okay. Uh, so meaning that uh, that that there is an evidence eh, of your under understanding of your job. Similarly, eh, serupa juga dengan project major dua dan juga my minor. Uh, so you need to draw this imposition work workflow. Okay, you need to do the imposition workflows. So for major one, I give you, I, I already give you a scene. Uh, saya bagi awak scene. Eh, software yang kita gunakan adalah screen impose 2000 client. Okay, for major two, uh, maybe you print on a version 80. Uh, so what kind of software they use? Eh, uh, eh? apa ni? Uh, kita tahu. Eh, you can, you can get those information. Eh, either from the software, eh, from the internet, eh, look at the uh, uh, machine names and study their workflows. Okay, so, uh, ah, okay, so this is one uh, thing that I would like to share with you, okay, uh, because I noticed this, eh, uh, so I noticed this, dalam, uh, ketika anda buat project. So, uh, this is coming from uh, benda yang paling simple, wikipedia.org imposition. Because I like this statement, because uh, some of you confuse of these two words. Eh? Printer spread and reader spread. Eh? Technically, these words eh, tak dinyatakan dalam buku. Eh? Tak dinyatakan. Tapi here, when I use this word, when they use this word, eh, Printer spread means that they impose imposition. The printer spread. Uh, lembaran printer, printer spread macam imposition sheet macam whereby the positioning is already de defined. Uh, jadi reader spread macam mana? Uh, bila kata reader spread, which shows a finished printed piece on screen as it, it will appear on to the reader rather than the printer. Jadi, in other words, uh, so in other words, uh, Imposition sheet is this example. Okay. Reader spread is like this. Remember the words? Shows a finished printed piece on the screen as it appear to the read reader. Uh, so, maknanya, Reader spread. Ini boleh jadi front cover IFC P1. Okay, belakang dia page 2. Page 3. So, this is useful eh. Bukan kata yang ni tak relevan. This is useful kalau awak nak propose your design. Ha, nak propose your design lah. Eh, kan masih lagi tak siap meja meja 2 even meja 1 pun ada orang tak siap eh meja 1 meja 2 kan awak nak awak buat uh, buku kan 
catalog for example so you should do in the reader spread first sebab awak tak approve lagi awak nak dapatkan uh, maklum balas daripada supervisor awak yang berbahagia supervisor awak Puan Anis for example, awak nak bagi dia so logically you must do in reader spread first uh, dah kata dah banyak kali lah eh, banyak kali review satu uh, lepas tu review dua Lepas tu review tiga sampailah ke review empat kata dah okay then you move to the imposition sheet. Ha, barulah buat imposition sheet. Ha, so why saya kena, kenapa saya tekankan dua perkara ni because I from my observation ya. Yeah, eh, from my observation eh, when you submit your major one or minor or whatever major two kan. Ha, saya nampak anda terus nak buat imposition sheet. You should you should know your the stage of your project. Kalau awak nak kita review, awak belum approve lagi. So you should apply reader spread. Dah approve then you apply imposition sheet. Yeah. Okay? That's the uh, tips that I given to to you. Okay, next in the workflow. Next in the workflow is uh, plate mapping workflow is the raster image pro processor. Eh? Raster image pro processor ataupun rest uh, ataupun ataupun RIP uh, tak ada kena mengena rest in peace eh tak ada kena mengena it is raster image processor apa raster image processor means A raster image processor comprise all functions modules uh, modules so every single thing is a modules that are required for the translation of a complex page description into a device specific data format normally to address an output system okay all function modules required to translate a complex page description into a device specific data from format Now, as you know, eh, portable document format or PDF is a composite of postscript file. Dia adalah composite kepada postscript file. Script, eh, di belakang PDF itu dikenali dengan nama postscript. Okay, dinamakan post, postscript. Jadi, those postscript is been interpreted eh, menjadi satu komposit yang diberi nama portable document format PDF. Ha, eh. ha, dulu, dulu lah, saya pun ada pengalaman ni, tak nampak pun file dia. Ha, tak nak, tak, konsep what you see is what you get tak ada. Tak nampak. Ha, tak nampak. Because it is a coding lah. It's a coding lah. It's a script. Coding yang dikenali dengan nama postscript. Ha, tapi sekarang ni teknologi dah berkembang. Ha, zaman dah berubah. Kan? Ha, dah ada teknologi that can interpret the postscript file into a PDF file. Yang mana sekarang ni lah yang dah berlaku. Okay? So, apa dia berlaku ialah apa yang ketika itu berlaku adalah eh, for your information just to share with you lah. Eh, sebab kita terlibat dalam acara ni. Eh, kalau Cik Jamil ada dalam ni lagi bagus eh. Mungkin dia boleh share. Tak ada. Okey, tak apa. So, uh, Postscript file. Lepas tu ada satu alat, uh, satu software namanya Acrobat Distiller. Huh. Uh, so, this Acrobat Distiller, apa dia buat? They interpret the file, the postscript file into a PDF. Jadi PDF. So this PDF 
then fit into the into the uh, uh, into the CT CTP. Uh, so now what you can see this acrobat distiller is no longer uh, is a uh, jumut uh, so that the jumut lah the obsolete. Uh, Dah obsolete, dah habis dah. Ha? Maknanya, you have the design, uh, you can straight away export to PD, PDF. Mana distiller ni is already embedded, uh, dimasukkan. Embedded within the Adobe software. Uh, within the Adobe software. Uh, dia dah embed, eh? dah jadi Adobe software software. Uh, jadi uh, at that time eh uh, uh, figure 3. Point, uh, 3.244 ni uh, dia meletakkan satu senario postscript file kan eh. So this postscript file eh, for example uh, uh, hasil dia ni postscript file ni you can straight away feed to the CT CTP. So now, dengan adanya distiller pada zaman saya ada distiller, pada zaman dulu tak ada lagi distiller, this postscript file ni send it to the CTP. So at my time, we have distiller, ada satu step ni to distill, to interpret the PDF, the postscript into a PDF. So from the PDF, we submit the PDF into the CTP. Ha. Step dia macam tu eh. Uh, next is uh, during that time within the uh, CTP so in the CTP itself yang akan do the interpretation of the postscript file okay uh, so postscript is a coding lah is a script is a coding eh? is a computer code eh? yang di develop oleh Adobe way back in the early 90s ke tak silap saya kan kalau saya tak silap lah awak boleh baca sejarah tu eh dia uh, develop eh sama-sama eh ketika itu dengan eh eh Apple ha Apple keluarkan printer nama dia laser writer so terdapat keperluan macam mana eh nak interpret kan file tu eh, supaya dia boleh cetak ha supaya dia boleh di cetak kan uh, so they develop together with eh, Adobe. Eh. Sebab itu eh, kalau awak tengok eh, bila cakap pasal design, pasal apa, dia mesti ah, dia mesti sebut Apple. Ah, sebab Apple yang one of the companies that mempelopori eh, hardware eh, pada ketika itu. Eh, dia mempelopori hardware uh, computers eh, dan sebagainya. Eh. Okay, let's go back to here. Postscript read in the prepress workflow. So now let's imagine this is your PDF. PDF contains text, uh, data for text, graphic, picture, layout. Ah, ni semua kita dah faham lah eh. We understood all this. Okay, so this is a PDF. So what raster image processor do will interpret, interpretation of your, of this file. Eh? And then they render the file. Okay. And then what they do, as you know, we convert those into, into screen. We apply screen. Ah, we apply the screening. Okay. We apply the screening pro process under the rasterizer. Ah, eh? So what we, at the end of this, uh, imaging process, eh, raster image process that we can see a dot, bitmap uh, dot shape. So in the form of screening, in the form of dot shape. Ah, uh, itu yang saya dok cakap tu. Berapa LPI? Ah, ni all those all those is just frequency lah. Uh, those all those is the frequency. And belum lagi screen angle lah, the screen angle yang tertentu. Screen angle yang tertentu. And of course there is a dot shape yang ter, 
the two on that. So uh, it processes the file uh, using this uh, in within this raster image pro processor. Uh, interpreter, renderer, rasterizer. Same. Next, it will then image uh, into the plate. So this imaging here outside of this uh, raster image processor, uh, imaging. This is the device. Ini lah alat yang akan image plate tersebut. So dia dapat arahan, dapat information. Eh, dapat instruction macam mana nak output dot tersebut berdasarkan kepada maklumat yang diinterpret oleh raster image processor ini. So, one scenario. Scenario yang kedua adalah RIP within the digital printing. Ha, ini untuk jadi plate. Kalau digital printing, RIP send directly imaging to the paper. Ha, to the paper. Ha, so this is to the plate. Kalau digital printing, to the paper. Imaging dia. Ha, dia ni tu eh. Okay. So, ha. Raster image processor have been around for as long as there has been digital electronic prepress. Jadi RIP ni bukan baru dah lama dah. Eh, I think you also have covered this in the uh, in the digital prepress class. Eh? I rasa you dah cover ni dalam digital print press class eh. Because this is important eh. Kita dah tak ada pass up kita kena cerita pasal rasterizing the image processor eh. So practically every manufacturer every manufacturer had its own page description language and therefore also had an RIP set up to handle this. Uh, manufacturers mean that uh, manufacturers of the city of the CTP system itself. Uh, mungkin ada teknologi dia yang berbeza kan. Uh, so dia dia develop lah based on their R&D they, 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 they know that this type of engine ataupun RIP able to do uh, processing dengan lebih cepat ke, dengan lebih baik ke, lebih efficient ke dan se sebagainya. Uh, antara yang terkenal adalah uh, Adobe PDF Print and NG dan sebagainya kan, APTE kan eh? dan sebagainya. Itu nanti awak boleh check eh? video class. Now the term raster image processor has come to be closely associated with postscript page. Ada memang berkaitan dengan postscript ah. File yang saya sebutkan tadi tu. Eh? Is a description language, is a computer coding language lah. Eh? To run computer program that have been written in higher program programming language. Ah, macam ni. C Pascal or Postscript. Eh? Ada banyak lagi lah. Ini uh, just an overview lah. Tak suruh awak apa lah. Just to, it's good to know lah. It's good to, to know eh. Uh, C, C++, you know, benda-benda macam tu eh. Pascal, Postscript eh? dan se sebagainya lah. Eh? So, we in printing industry, we apply post Postscript eh. So, uh, modern computer technology uses two basic principles. The first common command written in the higher programming language can be translated into a machine compatible binary structure by a compiler. That, that this is to describe how the prepress ataupun how RIP process the file. Eh? In the second program can remain in higher language and is transferred into a machine compatible code on the final computer system by an inter interpreter. Uh, so all these steps eh, can be simplified into this, eh, this step. This is what happened during the RIP. Uh, raster image pro processor. So, uh, 
so if you imagine eh, kalau awak imagine benda ni satu uh, satu hardware kan awak salah uh, you are totally wrong uh, because postscript is a file file kan so yang ni is a system lah. uh, satu engine lah is a, is a print engine lah eh, yang process file anda So every um, uh, RIP ni has its own capabilities dia. Eh? Have its own cap capabilities because we have a lot of manufacturers yang produce RIP. Yeah? With, with, with their own uh, research and development lah. Eh? Ada yang tertentu. Jadi sebab itu kan. Uh, sebab itu uh, kita dah tahu dah benda ni dia sistem kan. Jadi dia ada capabilities dia. Uh, jadi kalau awak hantar dekat saya file eh, file uh, booklet sampai 146 megabyte eh, kalau saya tak boleh buka awak rasa lah RIP ni boleh proses ke file awak dengan efisien eh, because within this RIP there is an interpreter there, there is a step lah eh, to process your file of course lagi besar file tu lagi lama lah masa yang diambil That's the logic behind bila saya reject file anda, saya mengatakan bahawa it's not suitable for digital prepress workflow. This is the reason. And we talk about efficiency. Kalau awak really consider your file properly, kan? Uh, you design your file properly, you save your file properly, you set the resolution properly, you crop the file. Paling paling leking lah orang cakap, crop, cropping file. Crop file properly, dah tentu dia takkan sampai 100 lebih megabyte, 200 megabyte itu satu-satu dokumen ataupun satu-satu projek itu. Ha, that's the reason eh. Okay. Okay, now let's go back to your project. So, if we output this, your project uh, through the uh, so called uh, pusat pencetak kan eh they are using ni screen eh media technology hq 510 pc level 3 okay ah okay. what company produce this rig under harley queen eh? harley queen so let's uh, check this Ha. Okay. SQ 510 read version 6. Okay. Under the screen innovation and reliability. Ha ni dia punya keyword dia lah. Ha. The ripping solution that save you time, money and energy while giving you outstanding quality. Ya nak jual barang semua benda betul kan? Eh? Lah, eh. Screen letters HQ 510 RIP based on the powerful Harley Quinn RIP script works interpreter. Nampak si? The words interpreter here. Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn is a company that that R&D lah. That produce the RIP lah. Eh? Uh, produce the RIP. Okay. Uh, enables you, your output device to achieve the highest possible level of image quality. It features all the advances of PostScript 3. Uh, ada level lah. Eh? PostScript ni. Uh, code ni ada level dia kan. As well as the speed, reliability and quality required to match the performance of screen fastest recorders. Recorders mean what? Is a CTP B device. Eh? Including the advanced plate right series of the plate center and the acclaim tento and katana image center. Ini nama nama produk dia lah. Eh, uh, maknanya HQ510 ni mungkin dia jual berasingan. Uh, dia mungkin dia jual berasingan dan kita boleh beli software ni, kita install. Kita beli rig dia pun, bo pun boleh. Ya, yep, memang boleh berlaku macam tu eh. So, uh, uh, ni macam case study lah eh. Macam case study eh. The HQ 
510 rib is supported by a wide range of flexible options that can be used with the rib to make a system that suits the work you do and the way you do it. Several enhance the rib functionality, including specialized color management, screening, trapping, and TIF, uh, ITP1. There is a standard on this, input and output. Uh, in other words, dengan kata lain, eh, the capabilities of this rig, okay, dia boleh apply specialized color management, dia boleh apply screening, apply trapping and also receive or output the TIF ITP1, input and the output phase. Oh, this is good. Eh? Uh, TIF, kita boleh output the imposition eh, into TIF. Eh? Uh, bit 1. Uh, one bit teeth kita panggil eh? One bit teeth eh? Kita boleh read dia siap-siap And then we save as one bit teeth And we export that One bit teeth into another system uh, Saya pernah terdedah dengan Exposed to that situation eh? uh, Di mana uh, I receive a file from a Client eh? Client ni is a high-end client lah eh? Uh, color craft, eh? color craft ni dia popular produk dia apa? Buku tau. Buku uh, pasal world maps. Uh, buku pasal world maps eh. Uh, buku pasal tour tourism eh dan sebagainya. Jadi apa dia supply pada kita is a one big thing. Everything is already in post. Everything is in their own screening. Semua screen semua dah apply. Dia tinggal bagi kita one big thing and then we should ataupun apply to our rig eh, sorry apply to our ctp just dump ataupun shoot to the ctp and then they output the okay tak perlu screening tak perlu imposition because already done at their uh, at their place eh? uh, dia boleh berlaku perkara tu eh? because why because those company dia nak maintain dia punya system ataupun dia punya settings or dia dia buat Quality. Ada result, ada reason tertentu lah eh, untuk dia buat macam tu eh. Maybe in the third world country kan. Uh, third world country tau. Eh, third world country ni uh, negara-negara yang uh, negara uh, like, apa developing country ni eh, biasanya Uh, dia ada industri percetak kan eh? tapi kos dia jadi lebih murah banding dengan develop country uh, kan jadi this company dia outsource dia punya printing process tu kepada developing country such as Malaysia kos kita murah for example uh, jadi dia nak maintain maybe dia, dia fikir we don't have those machine uh, kita tak ada kepakaran kemahiran perkenaan dengan perkara tu dia, dia save as tip one big tip you can you can cari eh, one big tip, file sangat besar eh, one big tip, dia hantar pada kita dan we just output the plate uh, this is how uh, develop country works lah eh, uh, ni saya cerita tahun 2005-2006 kan eh, saya terima job macam tu, apakah lagi sama sekarang ni lagi advance eh, lagi eh, hebat eh, uh, so post rip imposition and in rip OPI are also possible in rip ha, tadi kita we talk about in rip eh you boleh rip eh and opi also can be supported what is opi open prepress interface opi ha, dia tak dia macam device dependent tadi lah device in the independent dia tak terterikat dengan mana-mana sistem dia duduk sendiri dia je eh? open uh, prepress interface Uh, dia boleh, dia boleh, can can support that. Okay, so uh, what's more? Uh, what interesting is that we wanted to know what kind of software or what kind of format, PDF format that can be supported. Okay, now choose your platform. Uh, T version 6 of the HQ510 can operate on Windows or Power Mac system. It is compatible with Windows 2000, XP, 9 and Mac OS 10. Okay, so this is one of the features yang dia sah support. Okay, so ini banyak nak baca, so I can go to here. 
hard. Okay. Uh, Is it better? Okay. Uh, saya nak tunjuk yang ni because yang tu dia tak ada rumusan dia. Okay. Nah, software specification, oh. compatible font. Okay, this is font that is supported by this software. Input language. Uh, input language means the uh, version, uh, PDF version, uh, yang dia support language tadi kan. We talk about the uh, uh, postscript language kan. We talk about that. Uh, level uh, 3 level, and level 1 and 2 also being supported. PDF also supported. Kalau kita tak save as PDF, kita save as uh, PS, dia juga boleh terima. Eh, tapi sekarang ni susah lah kan, semua orang save PDF kan eh? So, it can support up to version 1.4 Haa, nampak? PDF up to version 1.4 Haa, remember? Ini pun kita dah buat eh? Now, the reason kenapa kita buat because Ada industri ini yang di support Haa, kita bukan buat sebarangan eh? Kita think about the output Uh, Alhamdulillah, cik tu bagi tahu eh, perkara tu eh. Okay, so uh, we also, uh, they, they, uh, this also can support TIF 6, TIF IT dan sebagainya, EPS, GIF dan sebagainya. Ni, 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 kita jarang kita gunakan. Right? Uh. Now, uh, Harlequin Precision Screening, Harlequin Disperse Screening, uh, ni type uh, ataupun teknologi screening yang dia uh, ada ke lah. Track Pro, eh, C3 plugin for PPF output, eh, proof ready PDF, read inspector, read improve DCS uh, 2.0, DCS ni uh, desktop composite separ, separation file. Ha, dulu kena kena separate eh, file eh. sebelum jadi composite kena separate file tu. Untuk saya magenta, yellow, black. Buka Photoshop boleh save tu. Awak kena dapat all those. Okay. Yeah. Uh, content PDF and media saving. So, uh, in conclusion of this is that uh, maknanya uh, bila kita nak setting kita punya file, kita kena consider dia punya output device kita. Uh, our specification. We need to know that. So, similarly, sama juga. Kalau lepas ni awak pergi kerja kan, uh, you are at the company, you need to Learn. Aha, awak kena learn lah. Mungkin tak sama dengan apa yang ada dekat pusat pencetakan. Ini tak sama kan. Dia berbeza kan. Ha, jadi awak menuntut awak lah. Ha, menuntut awak untuk jadi con, con, continuous learner. Ha, tahu continuous learner. Ha, continuous learning process tu sentiasa. Awak kena tahu lah. Ha, eh. Kalau orang tak beritahu maknanya awak kena ambil tahu sendiri sebab awak faham benda tu awak tahu for the plate making oh sebelum plate making file aku ni nak kena interpret by by a read raster image processor so apa capabilities RIP ni ha, so nak kena tak tahu ok ha, itu itu pengajaran di sebalik cikgu yang bercakap daripada pukul 8 pagi tadi Now, uh, this input language, eh, if you can see PDF 1.4, maknanya it support live trans transparency. Dia support live transparency. Sebab itu, eh, saya minta anda live trans transparency itu di, di on kan. Uh, macam mana nak on kan, kita save as PDF 1.4. So, biar read yang take over the process. Biar read yang proses the render ataupun render the file properly. Ha, kita tak nak on our side. Ha, bila kita buat on our side, it will uh, give different result. Uh, sebab ki, bila kita buat ki, kita setting uh, ataupun kita set sendiri kan. Uh, kita tak tahu kemampuan uh, machine kita, our computer to render those file. Eh? Uh, eh, Asma punya laptop kita tak tahu berapa RAM dia. 
uh, because it, it is RAM intensive. Uh, RAM intensive maksudnya dia pakai banyak RAM untuk render Render those file uh, Sebab itu kita save as, as a live transparency Okay, let the read render the file Okay, let the read render the file That's why we save it in PDF Okay, version 1.4 Okay, you can use this ya, eh? anda boleh gunakan ni in your uh, report okay so impose 2000 uh, this is impose 2000 this is an option uh, comprehensive easy to use imposition software so so in other words eh, dalam ni dia ada uh, modul lah tu saya cakap tadi eh, kat dalam slide saya kan I did mention about modul kan in the pre-press uh, all those modules semua ada kat dalam ni in this uh, integrated eh? so dia ada info imposition eh? impose 2000 comprehensive easy to use imposition software program that can be used for high volume book work eh? uh, step and repeat film optimization specialized color work and dan se sebagainya so if you ask me cik kenapa kita setting hari itu dia tak boleh ni ah, itu masalah kemahiran lah Nah, staff ni macam Cik Jamil sebut, staff ni kemahiran tidak menguasai lagi software tu. Nah, the software capable to do that. Eh, there is a screenshot ada dekat sini. Eh. Ada screenshot ni. Eh, untuk those setting. Nah, jadi, tapi dia tak buat, dia minta kita padamkan benda tu. Eh. Nah, jadi, saya pun hairan. Nah, tapi tak apa, bukan kita nak cari salah orang. Tapi kita, uh, when we understand that, bila kita faham benda tu, during your presentation, you can mention that. Anda boleh mentionkan perkara tersebut eh, Apa yang berlaku, tak apa That will be oh, okay Okay Now, uh, this allows fast placement and easy visual verification for each signature eh. Impose allow film plate, cutting, folding, blah 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 to be uh, Stacking marks uh, to be displayed nah, Jadi maknanya kalau kita tak buat marking all those marking tu Dia boleh impose dia dekat dalam dia boleh apply dia dalam software Impose 2000 eh, Boleh apply eh. nah, Tapi dia tak apply mungkin dia tak faham lah eh, Dia tak faham eh. nah, Tak apalah kita faham kan? Sebab kita yang nak dapat degree kan uh, Jadi nanti kalau awak kerja awak kena study lah eh, Software apa yang berada di syarikat kan? And, uh, eh. uh, So kali ni memang uh, uh, Common lah dalam industri percetakan eh. uh, Sebab kita kena memang sentiasa kena belajar benda baru kita kena belajar benda baru. Kalau kita tak faham, kita kena fahamkan lah. Eh? So, uh, we can do that. Uh, tapi, we need to apply those manually seperti mana yang diarahkan untuk oleh Encik Jamil dan kita apply. Eh? Lain lah kalau kita ada mesin CTP kita sen sendiri. Okay. So, Impost 2000 also enable single and multi page correction to be made without re-raping the whole job. Uh, di, uh, ini very powerful lah. Eh? Ha, kalau you dah read dia punya file eh, Kalau ada correction, correction apa? Correction apa? Ha, correction apa? Ha, salah ejaan lah cik ataupun tukar date ha, Bukan 24, 25, nak type 5 je Boleh tak? Boleh boleh, buka dan type 5 Edit within this soft software Okay, it also can rotate the pages 90, 180, 270 70 degrees to fit the maximum number of Pages possible on the flat. Flat means the punya uh, imposition sheet lah. Eh? Uh, can be rotated. Okay. Uh, so this is the picture of the oh, uh, of the impo imposition. Uh, the diagram there and also can be seen like this. Okay. Okay. And this ha, Ini Imposition ya ha, Nampak ini kan Berpandukan apa Dah tentu berpandukan dami Dami kat tangan lah Macam mana nak buat Kan And then they do the in, Impo Imposition Imposition mean You ada single file Macam ni tadi Saya sebut Okay So you take the file Drag and drop lah sekarang ni kan Drag ni Masuk kat sini Drag ni Masuk kat sini Betul ke? Tak tahulah Based on that Dami Ni pun masuk kat sini Masuk kat sini ha, Dan sebab sebagainya. 
So uh, CTP operator will be based on the dummy. Ini dummy ya. Nampak? Eh? Just drag and drop. Ha, bila saya nampak screenshot dia macam ni kan. Ha, bila saya nampak screenshot dia macam ni. Saya terfikir. Kan? Saya teringat zaman muda-muda saya eh. Ha, gunakan preps ni. Pening balik sebab all those things is measurement. Eh, tak, tak, tak nampak pun benda yang macam ni. Semua nampak numbers. Dia tak ada nampak visual macam ni. So sekarang ni zaman dah berubah, dah ada software yang macam ni. So di sini, info, in position looks like in your, in uh, for your packaging. Nah, ini yang akan nampak lah sebelum dia output plate. So what you going to do, awak akan simulate the process lah. Awak akan mensimulasikan proses ini. And not as difficult when you understand the size. Okay, size tu. Plate size. Okay, dan juga allowance yang tertentu untuk letak color. Color bar. Okay, tak your packaging here. Very uh, straightforward. Okay. What software to use? You can use Adobe in InDesign. Use Adobe in Design. Okay. You use Adobe in Design to do the import in position eh? is a, a re presentation of the in position shape ah, eh? representation why we need to represent because we learn through ODL kita tak aku play jadi kita kena think something yang kreatif lah eh? for to 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 improve Increase our understanding. Yeah. Yeah. So, dia macam tu. Eh. Ha, kalau single job ataupun packaging macam mana encik? Ha, macam ni. Lagi simple, straightforward. Macam ni nampak. Ni berapa up ni? Maybe uh, name card for example. Ha, nampak. See? Kan? Yeah. Yeah. Ha, ni packaging. Uh, this is color bar on. Macam tu eh. So, that's the thing that we need to do. Okay. Screening dia tak begitu. Okay, ni screening. Okay. So, uh, they using, uh, uh, ni ada teknologi dia lah, spectra screening. Okay, spectra, uh, spectra screening. Uh, ni under the screen, uh, screen companies lah. Eh. Uh, so this also an option. Uh, I do believe they 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 don't have the spectra, tak the spectra pun. Okay, maybe uh, normal Harlequin screening. Uh, when we talk about normal screening, biasanya dia akan pakai AM screening techno technology. Okay, AM screening techno technology. Okay, so uh, other software option, proof ready, output, read inspector, dan media, saving screening method, okay, change screening, optional, micro screening, also optional, oh, dia pakai ni, Harlequin precision screening, Harlequin precision screening, this is a, a, uh, uh, Optional, I think. Uh, Holy Queen Precision. Ni dah, is a way back lah. Eh. Dah lama sangat dah ni. Eh. Dah tak ada lah. Eh. Dah out of date lah. Eh. So, when I google Holy Queen Precision Screening. Eh. So, Tak ada satu, okay, ini ada kot, multi-read data sheet eh. Ha, tapi tak ada pun satu yang fokus on the Harley Quinn eh. So Harley Quinn pun dah improve kan, dia dah jadi global graf graphics eh. Ha, dah jadi nama lain dah eh, multi-read eh, v, V13 eh, Harley Quinn read. Ha, so all this thing. 
eh, Harley Quinn uh, jadi Tim Rip. Right. Okay. So tak ada, but uh, normally, normally, yeah. normally when we talk about normal screening, we are kind using AM skip screening, yeah. AM, A M, okay. Amplitude modulation. Ada satu lagi F M, frequency modulated. AM uh, and AM skip screening. Okay, so you need to mention this in your print report. You need to mention this in your print report. Okay, so uh, this is another topic that I uh, I need to mention, uh, I think, uh, because this is important on the workflow management. Okay, uh, read workflow uh, and PDF workflows. Uh, this is a comparison product. Productivity has uh, become a very important aspect in print production. Uh, depends on the ability of the total system to control the image setup, uh, then on the speed or of the recording itself. Jadi maknanya, in other words, uh, ability of the total system to control the image setup. So image setup to dikawal oleh the workflow management system, the whole complete system eh, di kawal tu. Itu yang sangat-sangat penting eh, in the productivity. Sebab itu kita lihat dan saya dah bagi contoh tadi. Hideable ada. Ada flow di sini. Uh, Codec ada dia punya flow di sini. Eh, uh, why? Because they want to streamline. They want to achieve productivity. Eh, they want to achieve productivity. Jadi one module connects to the other more module. Uh, jadi complete the whole system. Ha. Eh? Jadi uh, that is very important eh? Then, and uh, we can see that uh, things happen in our in industry. Eh? The whole range of requirement must be satisfied in order to guarantee productivity. Yeah. So productivity is very important here. Okay, productivity like I mentioned, productivity is very important. Work efficiently. Eh? work effi efficiently. Okay, so in normal uh, flow, eh? uh, in generic, uh, in generic workflows, eh? any generic workflows, eh? computer to plate workflows, eh? we have the file and we do the uh, checking. Eh? This uh, pre-flight and imposition within the, the same workflow, eh? within the same workflows and send to the read and send to the proof proofer. Okay, so here pre-flight imposition or another way is uh, from uh, imposition go to read, go straight away to the image center. Okay. My experience or my advice, nasihat uh, saya, the correct way uh, to minimize the risk of uh, kesilapan eh, dan sebagainya, eh, we need eh, when we do Uh, uh, plate making, we need to output our proof, proof in here. We call this imposition proof. So, the output imposition proof, apa tujuan proof? To check lah, to verify all those things. Yeah? Once it's ready, then we go back to read the file and send to the image, plate image center. Uh, so, that is the, what you call uh, advisable work work close eh, to do this. Ada juga syarikat yang macam ni, uh, do all those ripping dan sebagainya, all the file, do the, all do the imposition, rip dan terus kepada plate image center without any proofing. Ada juga. Eh, ber, berlaku. Eh, why this happen? Because macam saya sebut lah. Eh, bila you tambah satu lagi step, of course you akan tambah materials, bahan dia untuk print proof dan you akan tambah masa dan you akan tambah manpower untuk mengendalikan perkara ni. Uh, eh? uh, jadi this what happen lah. Uh, some of within the index, 
industry. Eh, saya pun pernah buat juga perkara ini tapi saya really confident of this. Eh, during my work, eh, oleh kerana job to urgent dan job to repeating. Ha, ha, repeat, benda yang sama, repeat. Eh, repeat job for example. So, I am confident with the jobs. So, what happened? I don't print the proof. Eh, proof saya tak print. Eh, saya tak print proof. Or, saya print proof satu page je. Contohnya, page depan dekat prelims. Eh, dekat prelims tu, dekat copyright page dia nak tukar. Tahun 2019, contohnya dia cetak. Ni ada cetakan baru, dia tulis itu tahun 2020. Kan, dia minta saya cetak yang tu, okay, update yang tu dekat PDF and then print, read, eh, sorry, uh, edit, lepas tu read, lepas tu print the proof and then stick on the page. Ha, macam tu je. Ya. Ada juga berlaku. Ha, right? ha, kenapa? Sebab mungkin ni banyak lah, banyak page. Kan, dia punya correction dekat satu je. Ha, sebab tu normally eh, for the job of the repeat, repeating job. Uh, job yang repeat lah. Repeat customer. Yeah. Uh, contohnya macam kamus. Yeah. I have the kamus here with me. Uh, ini ialah uh, apa benda? Longman Essential Activity macam kamus lah juga. Eh. Yeah. So biasanya kamus ni dia tak berubah lah. Jarang lah jarang. Sikit dia akan berubah. Dia punya cerita dalam ni. So apa dia minta eh. Biasanya, uh, saya pengalaman ni dia minta saya tukar dekat bahagian dekat bahagian okay. ini sekejap eh ah. ok Ini pelik sikit, ini prelims dia, copyright page dekat bagian belakang eh. So Copyright page Okay, mana dia pilih lah, macam-macam lah, pesan bla 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 Bila tarikh dia, 13 impression, biasanya dekat ni, impression Eh, ni last kali dia cetak tahun 2003 uh, Mungkin uh, 14 impression, 2015 contohnya So kena update pada bahagian ini. So yang ni mungkin saya ini version 2003. Nanti version yang baru mungkin ada perubahan-perubahan dalam ni. Dia minta update bahagian ini je. Ada. Bahagian ini je dia minta update. So apa saya buat, saya buka this PDF. Edit the PDF, saya type ni. Perkataan ni. 2003 saya tukar dia jadi 2015 for example. Alright. Uh, and normally, and some, maybe some of you akan tanya, Cik, dia tak create outline ke? Tak ada. Orang professional kan? Orang professional work, dia tak create outline ni. Haa, <laughs> professional. Uh, bukanlah kata orang, uh, awak semua tak professional. Eh, uh, tapi tengok bergantung pada job lah. Kan? Kalau awak gunakan teks macam ni kan? Ni teks ni. Uh, typeface ni kan? Uh, ni mesti ada typeface dia hantar sendiri. Eh? So, apa dia buat, dia save PDF and the text is embedded. Bila kata embedded, maksudnya dia tak perlu create online. Dia embedded within this PDF. So, this allows last minute correction. Ha. Last minute correction macam ni. Tarikh ke apa ke boleh type semula. Dalam? Dalam. Okay. So, this is the uh, itu okay, eh? uh, so uh, for your workflows right? untuk untuk workflows anda what do you think what happened you send the file so now we have sent the file you consider that um, Cik Jamil receive your file itu consider dah masuk dalam brief lah eh? Eh? Uh, uh, send the file consider the read tapi kalau in actual way, awak akan dapat plate kan? Awak can see the imposition. So sekarang ni kita tak ada. So what you going to do? You going to simulate the process using Adobe InDesign. Okay. And next we do the uh, uh, ripping. Uh, no, dah, dah ripping dah. Uh, imaging. Uh, plate device and the de developing. Okay.
Okay, next I'm going to talk about the digital proof. Okay, now as you know, eh, balik uh, pada workflow di pusat pencetakan, there is no such digital proof ya, dikeluarkan. In the correct or generic way eh, to do this, we need to print the digital proof. Why? Because proof as a representation of a finished product. Uh, representation now. They can represent it. So, sebelum the actual printing begins of before the actual plate making process yang time consuming, yang cost tinggi, uh, ada the proof sepatutnya sekeping. Eh, tapi tak berlaku di pusat pencetakan. Tak apa. Eh, tak apa. Uh, itu dia punya flow. Tapi we understand that this thing should happen. Eh, in our side, Okay, in our side, eh, dalam mana saya menguruskan awak ni, apa yang kita lakukan ini adalah secara soft, soft, soft proofing. Okay, uh, soft proofing. Eh? Maybe some of you also show me some sort of hard proof. Ada yang awak print out dan awak tunjukkan kepada saya. So, consider that uh, is a hard proof. Tapi as, you, as long as you can see eh, my management of your project kan, saya minta awak upload all your file kan, itu telah berlaku dalam satu konteks soft proof proofing. Eh, itu adalah soft proofing. Uh, so apa yang saya check pada soft proofing tu, eh, I check the content, eh, I check the color, okay, I check the type of ink, And I relate this with the type of paper. Eh? Uh, some of you maybe uh, understand that, uh, apa, can recall. Saya tanya ni nak print on paper apa. Kan, saya akan tanya juga. I also ask you to fill up the, uh, this thing. Remember? Uh, you also mention this. Uh, kalau berlaku ketidaksamaan tu, maknanya yang silapnya anda lah. Maknanya anda kena betulkan. Anda kena betulkan. Okay. So, all those things. Eh? Soft proof on color more monitor. Okay. I also mention about, uh, for example, eh, in terms of color, I, I did mention about uh, apa TCA ni. Total area TAC ya, eh? total area coverage dia. Uh, apa total? Uh, berapa banyak? Adakah dia dalam uh, percentage yang sesuai? Ataupun melebihi daripada percentage yang di recommendation, yang di recommend kan? Uh, I also mention about that. Anda pun buat per pembetulan itu. Okay? Uh, so, itulah dia yang kita lakukan ya. Eh? So, uh, apa kos yang terlibat? Uh, just a free of charge lah. I also uh, make sure that my monitor uh, calibrate, eh, calibrated to the, to the D50 viewing con condition. Eh, uh, itu on our, to, on my side lah. Untuk memastikan saya melihat image awak, color awak, file awak dengan betul. Uh, because I know you don't have those capabilities. Awak tak ada kemampuan tu. Tak kalah saya nak suruh. Uh, Izuan tolong beli uh, spectro photometer sekarang. Harga RM30,000. Uh, tak boleh kan? Uh, so myself ya. Yeah, calibrate uh, my monitor. And your responsibility is to submit the file and ask for the advice. Kalau something yang tak, ber, tak betul. Huh. Eh, macam tu. Kalau awak tak responsif maksudnya awak tak nak. Eh. Okay. So there is no cost involved on you, uh, maybe data plan eh, dan sebagainya. Uh, so, yang tu memang wajib lah eh. And the time, maybe immediately I can give you the feedback. Awak pun tak tahu eh. When you said, I can give you a feedback. Kalau lambat sikit, mungkin saya jam lah. Sebab saya ada banyak kelas juga yang saya perlu. Okay. Same up. Eh. So, that is what we do for your pro project eh. Soft proofing. So, what about hard proof? Perlu tak hard proof ni? Uh, so, uh, we still think about this. 
eh, saya dengan Puan Ali lagi masih lagi memikirkan berkenaan dengan perkara ini and I believe during your part 5 pun awak dah ada proof yang macam tu so you need to collect all those things eh, in one place supaya dia tak hilang nanti during your presentation you can support that Okay uh, What else? Uh, mock-up is there some sort of proof mock-up yang perutat yang kita tempah eh? kita tempat secara outsource di tempat yang lain tu pun salah satu proof juga tapi proof bukan proof content eh? dia proof apa kelas? dia proof size ah, technical lines dia the answer sebagainya so that is part of your proof okay what else um, imposition proof Uh, kita tak ada kemampuan nak buat imposition proof ini eh, tapi mungkin kita boleh simulate dia punya proses lah sepatutnya ni imposition proof kita ce kita cetak imposition proof ni tapi kita buat operasi dalam konteks ODF so apa kita buat bila kita dah siap imposition tu tadi awak save as PDF uh, consider itulah soft itulah awak punya impo, imposition proof awak Okay, so for color proof, uh, color proof pun sama When you send me your soft proof eh, Yang final tu, itulah color proof awak Kita tak boleh nak print physical because kita ada limitation nak keluar eh, Kita ada limitation nak keluar So, when you awak punya color proof, itulah color proof yang awak hantar kepada saya Yang telah diterima dalam PDF print ready itu Selagi tak ada dalam tu, consider awak tak ada color Color proof Okay So what the rest of this uh, proof? Uh, ini depends. Eh? Depends on the screen proof. Eh? True proof ini dia especially for content. Eh? Melihat screen structure. Screen means that screening lah. Uh, berapa dapat nampak dot tu? Berapa kedudukan screen tu? Eh? Uh, berapa angle screen tu? Boleh nampak eh? daripada screen proof. High end system yang ada dalam yang ada dalam Uh, uh, read tadi tu, dia boleh buat eh, dia boleh buat tu eh, I did mention this earlier eh, nampak screen angle berapa eh, dan sebagainya, kita tak ada capabilities tu kalau kita ada alat tu, mungkin kita boleh hasilkan lah screen proof eh, I don't believe that pusat percetakan ada eh, pusat percetakan tak ada kat sini, sebab dia optional tadi kan, kita tengok 1 bit pin tu dia op optional ok, now next is about press proof Wah, press proof ni Uh, basically, this is uh, very cost, uh, costly, eh? it's a costly process mana ya, eh? dia akan cetak lah, eh? press proof ni, dia akan cetak the file, create the uh, plate and print it out eh? using a flat, kalau offset lithography, using a flatbed offset lithography, flatbed offset tau eh? pada zaman saya ada ni, eh? press proof ni, so now In offset lithography, press proof has been replaced by color proof and screen proof. Dah digantikan dengan kedua-dua proses ini. And press proof ni buat film. Buat film, lepas tu buat plate, lepas buat plate, print on actual printing machine. Actual offset printing. Mesin cetak offset tapi bukan bukan jenis rotary lah. Eh, bukan jenis macam uh, Heidelberg uh, uh, GTO 52 ke bukan eh, Dia flat back eh. uh, okay, I can show you ni cerita lama lah eh. uh, Tapi menarik lah untuk awak study Ha, ada lagi mesin dia Red bed press. <laughs>
okay. Uh, dia cakap, cakap Korea ke, cakap Jepun ke, saya tak pasti. Now, uh, this is a flat bag. You can see the gripper side ni, dia letakkan one piece of paper, uh, ni flat. Bagian depan ni, dia, bagian atas dia flat. Eh? So, what happened? Ah, see? The first, uh, this this is the the plate, eh? the plate yang di apply dekat sini and the impression dia akan press on the on each of the eh? paper. Uh, so dia akan represent the actual printing uh, process nanti. Uh, itulah fungsi uh, proof, eh? representation of the uh, finish print uh, during the printing pro process. Ada uh, plate lah, dekat dekat plate. This is an offset plate. So in in uh, in modern way, eh, uh, yang kaedah modern ni dia dah tak ada dah benda ni. Eh, dah tak ada dah. Eh, dah uh, mungkin penggunaan dia terlampau-lampau sikit dan jumut lah eh. Sebab dah digantikan dengan color proof. Color proof ini pula dia, dia calibrated to the offset stand, standard. Uh, uh, nampak? Okay. So uh, itu dah boleh represent dia. Dia proof. Eh? So this type of uh, flat bed uh, proof eh? also called wet proof. W-E-T. Eh? Wet, wet proof. Eh? Nampak benda ni bergerak eh. Black blanket dia tu, blanket dia nampak. Eh? Blanket dia akan apply. Lepas tu, blanket akan terima the dark white. And then from blanket, dia akan apply on top of the bed paper. Uh, dia akan print eh. Macam offset. Mana apa proses offset? Uh, tapi jenis flat bed, uh, sekeping demi sekeping demi se sekeping. Uh. Uh, memang kita nak sekeping ni pun sebab apa dia wet proof. Okay, uh, so this is called uh, press press proof. Okay. Press proof, high cost, very slow. Okay, high cost but very slow. Bayangkan tadi tu lah, sekeping demi sekeping eh, proses itu eh. Dia bukan untuk production, dia khas untuk buat proof eh. Okay, so that is the basic concept of proof. Okay, now next we talk about the device. Eh, we talk about the, the device to image your plate eh. Computer to plate system. Now, computer to plate is a term used to describe the computer control direct imaging of the printing plates from digital data. Ha, digital data tadi is our file. Tadi macam kita sebutkan tadi. It based on PostScript lang language. Kan, our digital data is a PD in the in the form of PDF for format. Okay, so the vast majority of the computer to plate uh, units use external drum system. Kebanyakan uh, so penggunaan uh, device ini, eh, alatan ini adalah menggunakan teknologi external drum system. So Macam mana basic concept of computer to plate? Ni ni. Ni the basic concept ni. Computer ada laser, ada optics. Optics ni ialah jelas cermin mata kan? Ah uh, bukanlah cermin mata maksudnya ada ada lens system optics and apply to the uh, this is the cylinder and uh, a plate is wrap. Plate ni dia wrap around the cylinder and produce the plate. So dalam buku cakap kebanyakan uh, hampir semualah eh computer to plate menggunakan teknologi external drum external drum system. Uh, so uh, macam mana external drum system macam ni? You have digital data, you have the laser, you have the optics and this is the drum, this is the printing plate is wrap wrap around the see? Cylinder. 
external means the laser is located outside of the drum okay external drum means the laser place placement dia outside of the drum macam ni eh, ada satu lagi unit internal internal dia berada dekat dalam ada juga tapi jarang penggunaan dia sepanjang saya kerja pun kita tak nampak eh so one of the example from the Heidelberg eh computer to play based on the external drum design ni okay so this picture below here okay this is the cylinder yang saya sebutkan tadi kalau awak lihat ni ada bahagian yang akan macam grip ah uh, macam gripper macam finger finger macam jari yang akan memegang play Eh, macam jari yang sedang memegang plate itu Okay, dia akan clamp the plate in this position And the cylinder will rotate Dia akan rotate lah dengan kelajuan yang tertentu Dan laser tu kat mana ni? Eh? Nampak kotak ni? Laser is here And then we'll apply the laser into the plate Okay uh, Macam tu eh Okay, let's see the pusat pencetakan system. Okay, the output device or the plate setter is called plate right 4300S. So this is the link. Huh. Okay. okay. Okay, plate right 4300, thermal, thermal plate recorders, ni nama dia lah, kita faham lah dia record, fungsi dia merekodkan image ke atas permukaan plate, eh, okay, creating a future in print, cewa, dia punya tagline dia, okay, high quality thermal CTP for, 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 for page, uh, Prices. So maknanya ini memberi gambaran kita bahawa ni untuk mesin yang 4 up eh? Medium size eh? Medium size Okay versatile and easy to use Support Saya macam blur eh Okay Push on track Okay, support for a wide range of plate size. Eh? The plate right 4300S can handle the plate requirement of a new larger format four page presses. Both support a maximum plate size of 830 by 660mm. The maximum plate size there. Okay and are also capable of supporting some of the smaller two page presses. So here memberi awak gambaran bahawa maksimum dia adalah 830 kali 660. Ah, size dia. Okay. Walau bagaimanapun ia juga boleh support a minimum a smaller two page presses. Ah, two page presses minimum plate size 324 kali 370. Ha, eh? ha, macam printer lah basically Boleh support maximum Boleh support ni minimum ha, eh? Dia bagi awak gam Gambaran Okay macam ni So what else uh, Bring out simply changing ni Haa ni Dynapon screen thermal computer to plate solution are unbeatable in for their quality, accuracy and reliability. Ha, ini semua semua orang nak cakap dia bagus, dia akan cakap dia bagus kan eh? ha, Macam macam tu lah eh? dia uh, nak jual barang eh. They consistently output plates with a dot sharpness and registration accuracy 
that enable superior process control and fast make ready times and they also offer the benefits of easy daylight handling and exceptional production efficiency for both short and long runs eh? so all this this is the size and uh, the plate right uh, this is the efficiency of this machine can consistently output up to 21 plate per hour uh, dalam satu jam boleh output 21 keping plate eh? 20 keping satu plate pada resolution 2400 di DPI uh, the maximum dia lah Okay, uh, both model ada dua model yang dinyatakan sini. Eh. Both models have proven external drum design. See, external drum design. Jadi during your presentation, eh, kalau dia tanya awak, uh, what type of computer to play ataupun CTP device they are using, you can mention this. Eh. The technology they use for this CTP is external drum design. Uh, so this is the what you call the yeah, evidence nah, ambil yang gambar tu ni eh. okay now uh, what else maklumat yang kita dapat okay external drum design solution maximum size and high quality thermal ct the uh, thermal ctp thermal technology okay So, uh, productivity enhancing automation. Ada proses automation lain tak? Ada automatic inline plate punch. Ada ada punch, plate punch. Okay. Uh, why need to punch the plate? Uh, this this is part of the regis, registration accuracy lah. Eh? Kenapa kena punch tu? Sebab the printing press need to be Uh, sorry, the plate need to be slot, uh, slotted into the see, cylinder, kan? Eh? Into the cylinder and need, it, it need to be punched, okay? okay. Uh, automatic in lunch punching system. Now, as far as I know, eh, uh, CTP device at pusat pencetakan don't have this option. They tak ada option automatic in line punch. Uh, maknanya dia kena buat secara ma manual. Uh, tahu manual. Uh, manual maksudnya maksudnya lepas the plate is been output and then process take the plate to the puncher and punch the plate. Uh, uh, punch the plate. Uh, so yang tu adalah option. Uh, option pada machine tersebut. What else? Auto auto loader option eh, can be configured for efficient automatic operation optional auto loaders uh, auto loaders maksudnya plate ni di load secara auto automatis uh, automatic eh, eh, secara auto automatic Okay, tidak perlu human, uh, perlu sekali je lah human dimension nampak ni bahagian bawah ni. Okay. Ni. Ni plate cassette dia panggil. Uh, saya pun ada pengalaman ni. Plate cassette ni masukkanlah berapa keping plate kemampuan ni. Uh, mati cassette loader kan. Uh, 300 keping plate boleh masuk sekali. Pum masuk. Uh, so operator duduk kat tepi ni. Dia bagi instruction lah untuk output apa. Then. Ada set of sucker uh, macam macam dekat uh, feeding system pada mesin pencetakan kan? will pick up the plate one piece at a time and transfer to this section. Uh, ini mungkin register ke apa dia akan position ini sebelum dia masukkan ke dalam CTP device. Okay, so this area or this option, eh, auto loader, normally for high volume jobs. Uh, untuk organisasi yang job dia banyak. Eh. Uh, job dia terlampau bah, banyak auto loader ni. Satu hari boleh output sampai 200 hingga 500 keping plate. Uh, pengalaman lah, pengalaman hidup saya lah. Eh, eh, sewaktu bekerja di Viva Printing 
ya, kita pakai uh, jenis top set top setter uh, by Heidelberg ok, so satu hari kita boleh output 200 hingga 500 keping plate 500 tau, bayangkan eh. uh, dan boleh sampai ke muncak sampai 800 keping plate dalam masa satu hari uh, apa ni yang sampai banyak ni cik cik ni biar betul betul lah, kalau buku ni ya. Eh. Kamus, kalau syarikat saya tu, Viva Printing cetak kamus, ni berapa muka surat ni, bang? Haa, berapa muka surat ni, bang? Haa, berapa muka surat ni? 900 muka surat. 900 muka surat. Bahagikan dengan 16, 16, 32. Jadi ada 28 section. 28 section. Kalau part, kalau single color, 28 kali dengan 2. Kenapa kali 2? Depan hitam, satu plate. Belakang, satu plate. So, dia dah 56 keping plate. Itu baru kamus. Kalau majalah. Majalah alah, cincai-cincai dia korang buat. Pentek beri saya 40 muka surat. Kalau majalah ada kat luar sana, Ha, 56, 80 muka surat Semua full color ha, eh? 120 muka surat lah 120 muka surat Kalikan dengan Berapa? Ha, 88 kali dengan dengan 16 eh? 120 Bagi 16 So nak kena pakai 7 setengah section eh? 7 section Kali dengan 4 depan, 4 belakang Dan 8 sudah 56 keping plate tambah 4 keping plate lagi dah 60 tambah dengan cover 4 keping plate depan 4 keping plate belakang tambah lagi 8 sudah 68 keping plate baru satu job eh ha, satu hari ada banyak job eh ha, itu senario dia lah ha, itu senar senario jadi bila begitu eh, bila keadaan begitu jadi uh, Plate yang akan di load masuk dalam ni juga banyak lah. Uh, mungkin mesin dia adalah uh, adalah uh, SM102 Large Format Printing Machine. Eh, Large Format Printing Machine. Jadi maknanya apa? Kelas. Maknanya apa? Plate dia pun kena plate size SM102. Dia load siap-siap. Eh, dia akan output untuk SM102. Uh, so, ada satu lagi tray dah standby kat sini Untuk mungkin X, uh, apa? SM74 For example kan? uh, So, kalau dia perlu Perlukan reprint dan sebagainya Dia akan tukarkan tu uh, Biasanya kita akan tukarlah satu eh? Yang kedua, kita akan buat Production planning uh, Kita akan buat production planning Okay, macam mana XM102 nak jalan dulu For example, ada 10 job So, kita akan output 10 job siap-siap Q. Eh, kita akan Q output 10 job. So, bagi dekat 10 mesin tu. So, 10 mesin tu dah uh, dah bertenang. Tenang tu maksudnya operator dia semua dah dapat plate. Then, kita boleh ar buat arrangement untuk plate yang lah, lain. Ha, eh, ada macam tu eh. Ha, tu yang dipanggilkan sebagai multi cassette. Uh, ni multi cassette ni mungkin uh, teknologi dia mungkin boleh dalam satu cassette ni boleh masuk a few plates lah eh, few types of plate eh uh, auto loader uh, tu maksudnya auto loader kalau tidak dia akan kita akan buat manual low loading um, system manual loading maksudnya benda ni terbuka lah benda ni akan terbuka dan operator masukkan sekeping plate demi sekeping Plate. Kalau 68 keping plate, 68 keping, 68 kali perlu dimasukkan ke dalam plate loader, uh, apa, uh, CTP ini. Ha, ada macam tu. Okay. Uh, eh. So what else? Apa lagi? Ah, this is good. So, 4300S eh. Okay, external drum uh, Nampak? Eh, pakai laser eh Laser dan diode Okay, so you can take this 
back for your final uh, for your re report. Okay, for your report. Okay, so uh, if you see here, 84,000 PS plate transport unit specification again. Uh, yang ini maybe from here, now remember, ini proses belum habis ni. Okay, ini proses belum tamat. Apabila plate in, ini plate in, ini in, so dia akan out. Out ni maksudnya dia pergi mana? Dia kena pergi di prop processing. Proses, processing, pergi kepada develop development, plate development, ada pro, processor lah ni kat sini eh, so lepas ni kita akan cerita eh, processor macam ni eh, uh, so this something like, like this ok, so uh, this is about the screen plate, right Okay, uh, so next is the plate processing. Uh, plate processing. Uh, so this article I I take from a C CTF. Okay, a basic concept lah. Eh, for CTF, what is CTF? Computer to film. Eh, uh, ini nak process film. Uh, plate dia is quite is quite different. Tapi the same the same concept. Maksudnya, after the plate has been uh, uh, image it then needs to be processed. Eh? Sebab apa? Kenapa? Kenapa eh? During this, eh? lepas di image kan tu, all those plate, semua plate ni, image yang terbentuk di atas permukaan plate itu, apa yang berlaku? What do you think? Dalam konteks, latent image. Latent. Eh? Latent. Latent means image yang terpendam. Eh? Image yang ter terpendam. Ah, so kita nak reveal the image. Eh, kita nak reveal the image that been record by the laser. Kita nak buat macam tu kan? Ah, so we need to process the plate. Kita kena process plate tersebut. So in computer to film. Kenapa saya gunakan contoh computer to film? Sebab apa dia quite technical eh? Dia ada developer, fixer and eh? water kan eh? uh, of, of course there is a control console kan So film kan so, Tapi in CTP they don't, they don't have this But it need to be further process the, the plate eh? Kita kena further process the plates eh? So if you remember I said about latent image Laser beam, dia dah, dah latent image So kalau kita tengok A, thermal di Composition itu akan ber, berlaku eh. Thermal composition Image, uh, bahagian image Yang di laserkan tu eh, eh, Akan jadi lembut uh, I would say that soften eh. it, it will be soften And it will go through the uh, Processor through this brush dan sebagainya dia akan menghakis pada bahagian yang itu jadi yang tertinggal tu adalah bahagian yang ber image eh, bahagian yang accept ink eh, menjadi bahagian yang accepting ink ok so how this happen macam mana dia berlaku dalam plate pro processor with a specific cap chemical, ada chemical dia eh, yang akan berinteraksi, bertindak balas dengan plate tersebut ok, so that is why the most important thing here is the plates eh, printing plates for digital imaging printing plate tu penting eh, uh, the chemical itself will facilitate the development pro process ok so the next step is plate the development. 
So, uh, in order to develop the plate, we need to know what types of uh, plate that we use for our project. Apa jenis plate yang kita gunakan untuk projek kita? Kelas? Apa jenis plate yang kita gunakan untuk projek awak ni? Boleh tolong jawab? Apa jenis plate yang awak gunakan untuk plate? Mana tim pre-press tolong jawab? Tim pre-press ada tak? Apa jenis plate yang awak gunakan? Apa dalam, saya tanya ni, apa nama plate yang kita gunakan untuk kita output plate ni? Soalan saya, apa nama plate yang bakal kita gunakan untuk kita output plate? Projek awak ni, meja satu. Tolong jawab. Syazani Izzat. Ada Syazani Izzat dalam ni? Uh, Siti Sarah Aina Apa nama plate dia Sarah? Tak ada Sofia apa nama plate dia Sofia? Sofia, apa nama plate ni Sofia? Uh, Lydia Wati, ada Lydia Wati, apa nama plate yang bakal awak output? Nama plate. Ha, nama plate. Saya minta benda yang paling mudah. Nama plate. Ha, kan? Saya tak minta jenis plate. Saya minta nama plate. Macam saya tanya nama. Nama awak siapa? Nama saya Faiz. Hari ni saya lewat je. Ha, saya lambat masuk. Saya tanya nama je. Ya? Ha, saya tanya nama. Nama plate yang untuk output. Output punya ni. Kan kita dah buat ni. Saya, saya, saya tanya lah balik. Kalau nama paper kita tahu kan. Nama paper Kan? Saya, sekarang saya tanya nama plate. Apa nama plate? Apa nama plate? Apa nama plate? Lidiawati ada Lidiawati? Uh, siapa lagi? Siapa? Atau macam siapa? Hasliana? Apa nama plate dia Hasliana? Hasliana, Wan Nur Hasliana, ada Wan Nur Hasliana Wan Nur Hasliana, ada Wan Nur Hasliana, ada tu Saya tanya, apa nama plate, kalau lah kita ditakdirkan cetak Saya tanya, apa nama plate yang uh, bakal kita gunakan 
untuk projek kita Atau macam macam pun nak tolong saya Saya bukan apa saya pernah cakap daripada pukul 8 You know Interaksi daripada awak tu macam dia Melembutkan lah hati saya you know Kalau tak tahu pun tak apalah Kalau salah pun tak apalah eh Syakir eh Kalau salah pun apa nak buat Kefahaman tak ada Kan foto polimer biasa dia orang gunakan untuk Haa uh, Uh, apa flexografi orang tak gunakan untuk offset litografi tuan kan ha? jadi at least awak jawab tu orang kata kita ber, berinteraksi lah you know saya sendiri cakap depan komputer baik saya record je saya punya ni korang tengok lah balik kan ha, you know kalau tak tahu pun tak apa minta maaf tuan uh, kami terkilaf lah, contohnya kami tak tahu. Terma pelik. Kan? Jawab kan? Apa benda? Apa benda pelik? Siapa jawab tadi? Terma pelik. Siapa jawab? Ikram. Akram. Siapa jawab? Akram. Ha. 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 Ya. Ija. Terma pelik. Ha. CTP terma pelik. Ha. CTP terma pelik. Ha. Tapi kalau bagus juga lah eh. Bagus juga kalau awak jawab dengan lengkap lah Pergi ke uh, project management uh, Under main spec Lepas tu guide Lepas tu uh, scroll sampai bar, bawah Dia tulis sini positive plate XL75 So kalau boleh menjawab positif thermal plate lagi bah, bagus dan dia juga membuatkan saya bang bangga lah dan juga usaha saya letakkan maklumat dalam ni tidak sia tidak sia tidak sia betul Akram tidak sia sia maksudnya ada orang lah yang tengok benda ni you know kan tak adalah letak sembarangan maknanya ada orang tengok ha, tak take care lah tengok malam ke subuh ke waktu sahur ke waktu buka ke ada orang tengok benda ni ha, you know benda macam tu eh. ok so bolehlah jawab betul eh positif thermal plate eh. ha, positif thermal plate ha, tu jenis dia ok so for your report you need to mention eh, what type eh, uh, what type of plates Again, saya nak beritahu, kita bukan grafik eh, Kita lebih hebat daripada grafik ha, Kita nak beritahu tu Kita teknikal lagi daripada grafik Kita extend grafik ha, Extend maksudnya Maksudnya bukanlah extend belajar Maksudnya kita punya pemahaman tu Melebihi lagi daripada level Level grafik ya. Jadi explanation kita tu kena ada reason lah Kena bersifat tek, teknikal Eh, ha, kena bersifat teknikal. Jadi anda kena buatlah research sikit eh, berkenaan dengan CTP tu. Eh, ha, kalau awak tengok sepanjang daripada pukul 8 sampai pukul 10.42 pagi ni, eh, saya dapat maklumat-maklumat macam ni, ni, takkanlah saya dapat wahyu. Kan? Saya dapat wahyu ke? Dapat benda ni, dah tentu ada ada homework yang saya buat. Kalau cikgu buat homework, kan? Ha, pelajar pun kena buat homework lah. Eh? Uh, okay, so kembali kepada kau punya uh, plate ini eh, Jenis plate eh, yang digunakan untuk projek awak ini adalah daripada keluaran daripada syarikat Lucky Kua Guang Graphic Company Limited jenis TP2 Thermal CTP Plate eh, uh, Ini link ni berada di sini Kemudian copy And uh, Oh, eh, China Raki Hua Kuang Hua Kuang Graphics Company Limited eh, 
Okay, so how do you need to, how do you know this? Macam mana awak dah tahu ni? You can follow up to the technician eh, involved yang jagakan uh, awak punya project ni. Uh, awak, uh, ataupun yang jagakan bah, bahan. Eh, uh, macam kita buat rujukan untuk uh, uh, material kita, substrate kita. Kita rujuk pada siapa kan? Uh, this also, you can contact them lah. Bagi tahu lah. Eh, uh, awak boleh confirmkan perkara tersebut eh. So, as you can see, eh, thermal CTP plate consistent dengan 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 mesin kita ni. Consistent maksudnya dia synchronize lah plate itu. Ini ini CTP thermal uh, CTP thermal kan? Uh, thermal plate recorder jenis-jenis thermal. Jadi plate yang kita gunakan juga mempunyai ciri-ciri thermal plate. Eh? Mempunyai ciri-ciri thermal. Ha, macam ni eh. Ha, so, kuah-kuang thermal CTP plate eh, is a high quality printing plate specialized for thermal CTP plate setter. Eh? Self-developed by Lucky Hua Guang Graphics Company. It is directly scanned by 830nm. Nm still, uh, uh, stand for nanometer. Ini cahaya, eh? 830 nanometer. Laser control by computer and put on press for printing after the developing. Uh, consistent lah apa yang saya sebutkan tadi. Uh, apa yang consistent maknanya? Eh, dia perlu di menggunakan CTP plate setter eh, yang mempunyai laser ni, laser control eh, by computer eh. kemudian ianya perlu develop eh, barulah boleh digunakan untuk proses percetakan eh. so the formulation design by our intellectual properties and the unique manufacturing process make Huaguang CTP Plates, features as follows. Uh, so, formulation maksudnya apa ni? ni, ni, ni. Eh? Is blue emulsion side. Eh? Ada chemical properties yang tersen tersendiri. Okay. Uh, so, unique formulation design. High quality substrate, convenient bright room operation, outstanding plate setter, compatibility. Ha, ini dia punya iklan ni lah. Ya, uh, uniqueness dia. Uh, uniqueness dia. Dia kata compatible dengan plate setter. Lepas tu convenient bright room operation. Ini maksudnya apa? Ini maksudnya lighting condition. Uh, daylight punya condition. Dia boleh, dia tak, tidak expose kepada light condition yang macam tu. Eh, high quality substrate ni bahan material aluminium ni yang high quality lah ke tahan ke apa ke eh? eh? unique formulation ni lah those, those chemical so this is the plate type that you can put in your report eh? positive working no preheat thermal digital plate with optional post bake and for longer run so maksudnya apa ni kelas post bake ni maksudnya apa Haa, ni. positive means positive lah. It's a positive working plate lah. Eh? Image area kan. Eh? Uh, no preheat thermal digital plate. Maksudnya, there is another uh, system that requires that the plate need to be reheat. Eh? Lalu di reheat dulu sebelum digunakan. So, ini tak perlu. Eh? But with optional post bake. Uh, maksudnya, walaupun begitu, ini boleh dimasak, dibakar. Eh? Untuk penggunaan lebih panjang. Uh, kenapa nak bakar? Ni, ni kek ke encik? Uh, jadi uh, saya pun ada pengalaman ini eh, di mana syarikat saya eh, mereka ada long run. Satu, kuantiti dia banyak. Satu, that job eh, job ni berkaitan, ini berkaitan dengan job yang dia dapat. Satu, jobnya kuantitinya banyak. Banyak ni berapa? Uh, cetakan yang pertama ialah sepuluh ribu. Okey, 10,000 helayan. Okey, 10,000 helayan itu yang pertama. Dan yang kedua, dia bakal akan ada cetak semula. Reprint. 
Ha, cetak semula kan. Eh ada benda cetak semula ke? Eh ada. Contohnya macam kampus, buku teks. Buku teks sekolah tu kan. Kan? Ha, buku teks sekolah tu biasanya dia cetak semula. Ha, ada juga dia akan buat baru apabila terdapat sukatan baru dalam pembelajaran. Itu contohlah. Ha, contohnya kajian kata, eh kena masukkanlah ni aspek-aspek kemerdekaan contohnya dalam buku sejarah. Ha, jadi Publisher kena memikirkan bahan apa nak masuk, kena buat research lah. Kena buat, buat, buat desain baru, buat buku baru. Ha, jadi, plate yang lama perlu dimusnahkan. Ha, so, plate yang baru itu perlu di perlu dibakar, dimasak, bakar lah. Ha, bakar, kita panggil dia bakar berdasarkan kepada dua justifikasi tersebut. Satu, kuantitinya banyak. Bila kuantiti banyak, eh, plate itu, image pada plate mesti tahan. Ha, mesti mempunyai tahap durability yang tinggi. Durable of what? Durable of scratches. Durable of impact. Kan? Kita kita remember offset litografi dia indirect printing. Plate tu impact. Kena terus ke atas permukaan blanket. Betul? Kan? Bila banyak kali impact, mungkin akan berlaku pressure pressure yang tinggi ya, dan sebagainya. Jadi dia boleh tahan bantuan ada scratches dan sebagainya. Ha, jadi itu keputusan syarikat saya pada ketika itu. So, kita saya pun arahkan. Saya punya staff bangla lah biasanya. Okay, bos, you tolong bakar ni satu set plate. Saya cakap. So, ada satu oven yang sangat besar. Eh, oven yang sangat besar dan uh, kita akan gantung lah plate tu. Ni plate. Ni, ada bahagian dia siap punch apa semua, kita akan gant, gantung. Ha, tak kira lah, masa tu saya ingat saya gantung macam ni, bersusun lah. Eh, uh, oven tu boleh macam macam peti ais. Oven tu bentuk dia macam peti ais dekat dekat pasar. Masuk ke dalam dengan suasana yang panas, memang panas lah eh, tak adalah terbakar badan kita ni. Panas dan kita akan gantung. Okay, dia akan gantungkan dan uh, lebih kurang uh, 4 hingga Tak silap saya lah kalau saya ingat lagi 4 hingga 6 jam Dia akan buat plate tu gantung dan Lepas 4 hingga 6 jam kita dah buka oven tu Temperature control, heat lah, very heat on us eh So plate yang kita akan dapat tu akan berubah war warna ni Haa, berubah warnanya menjadi warna keperak Keperak Perangan. Kenapa? Sebab tekanan haba yang dikenakan di atas permukaan plate tu tadi. Jadi image dia yang berada di atas plate tu jadi do, do rumble. Ha, itu yang dipanggil sebagai post bake. Ha, kan? Kat tempat saya dipanggil bakar lah. Kau pergi bakar plate tu. Kadang-kadang banglar tak nak, tak nak pergi ataupun tak cukup staff. Hari rehat dia orang cuti. Ha, saya lah kena masuk plate tu. Gantung plate ni bakar. Sebelum balik, balik sejukkan. Eh, jadi dia berubah warna ni eh, daripada biru menjadi warna keperang-perangan macam warna biskut tu. <laughs> macam warna biskut. Yeah. Dia bakar itu. Okay, so uh, that's the decision eh, yang kita buat. So itu maksudnya uh, post bake, eh? for longer runs. Itu maksudnya longer, longer runs ni, eh? longer run. Jadi dia boleh digunakan dalam tempoh masa yang panjang. Dan normally I'm sharing you experience, eh? Eh? Uh, memang menarik lah. Memang banyak kerja, uh, tapi sebab kita cinta, <laughs> kita cinta percetakan, kita tak kira lah kan kerja dengan bangla, apa lah. Pengalaman tu bagus ya. Eh? Uh, so, So, after printing, uh, kan, akan ada satu team lah. Macam saya ada Nepal, eh. uh, kita akan collect plate yang dah dibakar tadi tu. Kita akan simpan, okay, kita akan transport dia, bawa ke satu lokasi yang penyimpanan plate. Uh, macam saya sebutkan tadi, sebab 
mungkin dalam waktu tempoh waktu tertentu dia akan cetak semula. Macam mana kita tahu dia cetak semula? Kita tengok kepada produk tersebut. Dan satu, yang kedua, yang kedua, jenis dia dia biasanya mungkinlah eh akan dinyatakan oleh klien tu. Klien yang akan cakap. Okey, bos, so saya sign kontrak dengan you setiap kali uh, long man essential ini akan keluar you akan dapat job ini. So maknanya kita dah tahu dah ini kampus dia akan cetak semula berulang kali kita akan simpan plate dia dan digunakan untuk ber- berulang-ulang kali. Ha eh macam tu eh. So itu maknanya re- replete. Cetak se, cetak semula. So similarly dalam konteks uh, packaging kan, uh, dalam konteks packaging pun kemungkinan besar boleh berlaku perkara-perkara yang macam ni. Kalau tidak dia reprint, dia akan jadi kuantiti yang besar. Eh, kuantiti ni banyak eh, untuk packaging tersebut. Uh, sebab apa orang buat keripik ni contohlah keripik, ya. produk keripik kan bukan satu tau. Ah, sekali satu batch tu mungkin uh, 200 kilo kan contoh lah. Ah, so dah tentu packaging dia banyak nak pakai. Eh? Ah, so begitu eh. So the application for medium sheet fat and web offset press eh? Al- uh, aluminium electrochemically green and anodized aluminium plate. Ah, ini, ini dia punya measurement thickness dia boleh ambil. Ah, ini pun sama. Uh, this is the sensitivity, dia punya cahaya 800 hingga 850 nanometer uh, Okay, this is the compatibility Now, remember eh, kenapa ada compatibility Now, ingat eh Codec, transceptor, hideable top setter Now, we need to remember the, those, this this company eh, For example, Codec, hideable is the uh, major player Major, uh, major player dalam industri offset litografi eh, sebab itu dia kata ada compatibility eh, maknanya dia nak meyakinkan orang yang membeli third party ni macam third party lah eh, bahawa kalau you nak bertukar daripada jenama kodak ataupun jenama hide boleh sebab apa saya dah test plate saya ni dengan mesin ini contohnya eh, dengan mesin ini ya. jadi ini menjadi secondary option uh, ataupun kita panggil sebagai budget op- option kepada plate yang dikeluarkan oleh Kodak dan juga high hideable uh, kalau hideable uh, apa nama plate dia uh, Halim, Halim ada di sini? tak ada, putus eh, kalau hideable eh, jenis plate dia hideable Safira kan Ada ber uh, Offset plate kan, jenis uh, Safira kan, itu, itu antara jenama dia eh. kalau Kodak pun ada jenama dia eh. ni Kodak uh, Transceptor ni mesin eh. ni mesin Transceptor, Magnus eh. ada ber top setter dengan Supra setter, jadi dia nyatakan sini supaya keyakinan tu supaya orang yang membeli produk ini plate ini, third party plate ini yakin lah yakin sebab uh, ok, kenapa wujud eh jenama-jenama seperti ini sebab apa? kita kena ingat eh bahawa dalam bisnes eh kalau kita dapat mengurangkan kos eh, dalam production lebih banyak margin keuntungan kita lah jadi muncullah syarikat-syarikat yang macam ni dia menawarkan alternatif kepada produk main, mainstream seperti ini Uh, daripada jenama Kodak dan se- sebagainya uh, jadi ini menjadi pilihan lah eh, sekarang eh. menjadi pilihan eh, oleh syarikat-syarikat percetakan dan juga pilihan kepada pembekal-pembekal uh, uh, supplier uh, di UI, UITM eh. dia membekalkan uh, plate seperti ini now, uh, transceptor, lotum, magnus ni ini all these thing ialah nama CTP device dia Kodak Trend Setter Kodak Trend Setter Q800 
uh, uh, nila machine eh. Okay? Uh, this is the machine. Uh, this is with the auto plate loading. So, uh, syukur Alhamdulillah waktu saya kerja tu, saya dapat uh, dapat experience kepada kedua-dua sistem Kodak Transetter and Heidelberg Top Setter. Uh, ni Top Setter. Uh, top Setter ni eh. Pada waktu tu, uh, setahun selepas saya join tu, company beli, beli pula ni Transetter. Transetter, dia beli pula mesin transetter ni kan sebab apa dia tak boleh nak menampung lah top setter ni sebab top setter ni memang over capacity tau eh, penggunaan top setter ni over capacity eh, dah melebihi daripada capacity dia banyak sangat dia output pada satu satu masa tu dan tak boleh nak cook sampai problem dah eh, top setter dia tu dia punya switch eh, dan sebagainya so dia beli yang tak So, I have experience dua, dua jenis daripada dua negara yang berbeza. Yang ni US, this is Germany. Okay, let's go back to Lucky. Uh, okay, this is the laser energy. This is the resolution, plate resolution. Uh, add to, dia boleh pergi sejauh 200, uh, setinggi 200 at uh, PI. Dependent upon capability of imaging devices. Okay, bergantung kepada uh, imaging devices ni. Kalau kita tengok plate right kita ni, kemampuan dia punya imaging ada dinyatakan tak? Nah, resolution 1200 dpi. Okay, it can go as far as this. Okay. Uh, 1200 Eh, boleh pergi 600 LPI dia boleh pergi eh. Ha, okay. So, ni kemampuan dia punya uh, dia punya resolution. Resolution dia. Okay. Uh, FM also can be supported. Ha, macam saya sebutkan tadi, the most commonly used is AM screening. AFM, frequency modulated screening. Also, dia boleh support eh, with uh, 20 micron stop, stop hastic. Now, okay, so uh, now remember just now I said about uh, developing ataupun uh, plate processing kan, saya sebut pasal plate processing kan, now see, this is the chemical uh, going to be used to develop the plate, to process the plate, the first plate, imaging the plate, eh, we need to use the developer. Uh, ni, this is the, the chemical lah yang digunakan eh, iaitu Huang Guang PPD 80 eh, Kodak Gold Star Pre, Premium uh, dan juga pelbagai lagi jenis uh, chemical ataupun developer yang boleh support plate ini ok, yang boleh support plate ini now next is about processing tadi, I also mention about uh, Okay. Uh, saya ambil contoh uh, ini kan so this uh, speed eh, film, ni kalau film this speed can be control eh, boleh dikawal kan plate juga boleh dikawal kelajuan ini melalui control con console so uh, for the hua guang plate eh, untuk plate hua guang ini Eh, telah dinyatakan eh, berapa saat eh, dan juga berapa temperature yang optimum bagi memproses plate ini nampak ni, temperature kena kawal iaitu 23 darjah celsius eh, dan juga dan juga 25 dengan kelajuan 25 saat eh, dengan kelajuan 25 saat saat eh, kodak gold star ada juga dia punya setting dia yang tersendiri, so all these second uh, apa settings uh, temperature settings, all these things is can be controlled in the developer of pro processor eh? processor dia macam mana kan ni ni untuk processor hmm, boleh di kawal 
Okey, ha, boleh dikawal melalui control con konsol. Okey, now proses ya. Right? Okey, okay. kemampuan mesin, eh? kemampuan plate, sorry, kemampuan plate run line dia ni sebab 100,000 impression if 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 it is un big. Okey, 100,000 impression. Eh? Uh, kalau dia bakar, dibakar, eh, dia boleh tahan sehingga 500,000 impression. Eh? 500,000 impression impression. So uh, again, uh, this is uh, during dia testing. Ini yang dia test lah eh. Banyak uh, variables eh, yang akan uh, meng, uh, memberi kesan eh, kepada berapa ketahanan plate tersebut eh. So it depends on the machine, mungkin dia punya pressure eh. Dia punya jenis paper dia, mungkin paper yang smooth Uh, paper, uh, uh, texture paper dan juga dia punya ink on condition dia. Okay, ink dia macam mana kan? Okay, safe light, uh, daylight handling. Safe light means that uh, the sensitivity of this plate. Tahap sensitivity plate ini. Okay. Uh, so, ini dinyatakan di sini tidak memerlukan safe light ni. Ha, dia boleh di, 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 digunakan eh, dalam konteks daylight. Kita pun dah belajar viewing condition. Eh. Daylight maksudnya berapa condition dia yang tertentukan cahaya yang yang, yang normal eh, daylight tu dia boleh dia boleh di, 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 digunakan. Eh. Ha, jadi tak perlu cahaya yang tertentu. Eh. Kita kena bilik gelap ke eh, dan sebagainya. Ada plate, ha, I think you 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 learn this in your pre-press class. Eh, saya cuma sentuh sikit. There is some plate that is sensitive to the uh, specific lighting con condition. Uh, negative working plate, for example, eh? uh, this, dia, dia sensitive. Kalau dia, dia terdedah kepada cahaya daylight macam ni sekarang ni, okay, terdedah kepada daylight kat rumah anda tu, ataupun cahaya matahari kat rumah, dia terus rosak ada. Eh? Uh, negative working plate eh? dan sebagainya. Eh? Okay. Dia begitu kan. So ini tidak eh. Itu yang senang tu. Eh, itu yang penggunaan dia lebih mudah. Eh, untuk daylight hand. Oleh kerana tahap sensitivity dia uh, boleh tahan kepada day, daylight. Okay. Dan sebagainya lah. Eh. Dan ini chef life. Eh, uh, expired date ini. Uh, kenapa ada expired date? Eh, dia serupa macam uh, produk lah eh. Because it involve a chemical dia. Eh, dia ada chemical eh, pada bahagian ni. Jadi kalau chemical ini dia bertindak balas kepada environment tau. Eh, dia bertindak balas kepada eh, environment. Jadi kalau environment tu uh, packaging dia mungkin terbuka ke ataupun bocor ke eh, termasuk benda-benda asing yang akan menjejaskan uh, plate ini dia akan uh, dia akan uh, terganggu eh, bahagian emulsion ini. Eh. So Uh, by right, it can stand about 18 months eh, selepas dia uh, selepas dia beli ada expired date. Nah, sebab itu plate ni semua ada expired date lah eh. eh and under recommended storage condition dan penyimpanan plate ini ada condition yang ter tertentu eh. Nah, sebab plate ni dia sensitif eh. Nah, satu kita kena ingat, dia ni pembawa image, image carrier. Okay. Satu. Yang kedua, dia sensitif. Nah, plate ni is a sensitive material such as paper eh? uh, similar to paper kan uh, paper tu lagi lah eh? you expose to the humidity habis eh? problems eh? during the printing uh, plate also uh, similar eh? walaupun dia kata daylight handling ni dia, dia, dia boleh tahan cahaya daylight eh? tapi kalau you dah dedahkan terlampau lama sangat uh, sebab so itu lah dia akan mempengaruhi quality plate tersebut. Okay, so this is the uh, condition lah eh, for so storage eh. Temperature eh, dan sebagainya dia ada ya, nyatakan. I don't know how do pusat percetakan uh, practice dia plate eh. I don't know. Tapi uh, I can give you some sort of uh, overview 
eh, ruang ni dia akan simpan di tempat yang uh, teratur, ada rak yang tertentu dan kawasannya itu gelap lah. Eh, lighting dia agak uh, rendah eh, kerana salah satunya adalah untuk uh, preserve the plate, satu dan juga suhu juga terkawal. Terkawal in the sense of ada aircon eh, or aircon that is switch on uh, more than 8 hours in a in the day, eh. sepanjang mereka bekerja dia akan switch on aircon itu mungkin lebih kurang 8 ke 12 jam satu hari, condition yang begitu dan ada ruangan yang ter, tertutup so I can confidently they reserve or they, they store their plates properly in it con condition ok so you can put this in your plate in your, in your report and uh, mention this in your pro project technical uh, report. Okay, so um, uh, this is the end of this uh, first session.